Great Cable System proudly presents Toledo Gold Digger Hockey on Channel 5A. This afternoon, Peter Mahovlich's Scrappy Gold Diggers host the Saginaw Generals. Lace up your skates and tighten your chin straps as these two international hockey league rivals do battle live from the Toledo Sports Arena. The rush is on for the playoff berths and the right to buy for the Turner Cup and the championship of the IHL. Next up is one of the challenges to achieve that goal. The Toledo Gold Diggers will be facing off against the visiting Saginaw Generals at the Sports Arena, all on Channel 5A of the cable system. From the Toledo Sports Arena, I'm Glenn Cerny along with Perry Braun. And this afternoon on Channel 5A, we bring you Toledo Gold Digger Hockey as they face the Saginaw Generals. Again, joining me for the color on today's contest, a member of the 1984 NCAA Championship Hockey Team from Bowling Green State University, Perry Braun. And Perry, going to be nice working with you today at the Sports Arena as the Gold Diggers continue their rush for the playoffs. And Glenn, always a fine time working with you. Yes, it's getting into that second half of the season now. There's seven points behind Kalamazoo for that fight, fight for the playoff spot. Muskegon's way out in front in their division with 62 points. So it's important for uh, Toledo to get a, get a good winning streak going here and get challenging Kalamazoo for that third, third spot in their division. Pete Mahovlich in the lineup should look very good for him. We mentioned Pete Mahovlich being in the lineup, and of course, due to the injuries, once again today, he is suited up. And when you talk about Pete Mahovlich playing, it just uh, sends a little tingle down the spine to see a great player like him on the ice again, doesn't it? It sure does. NHL history is, is staring little people right, right before their eyes. A man of 14 years in the NHL, four Stanley Cup teams, two years of Team Canada against the Russians, international experience, and now he's suited up. I'm really excited. I follow him all through his career when I was a young child growing up in the West Coast, and I'm excited just to watch him. The other uh, side of the coin is going to be the Saginaw Generals, always a powerhouse in the IHL, and they're putting together another good campaign here this year. They certainly are. Defensively, they're once again very strong in the net with Nickel starting tonight and Darren Pang. But well, once again, we're going to look at the offensive side with Jeff Pyle. I played against him in college in northern Michigan. Fine offensive score, great hand, handles the puck extremely well, and skates exceptionally. We're looking forward to three great periods of hockey here today at Channel 5A and certainly hope you'll stay with us when we return starting lineups in the opening face-off from the Toledo Sports Arena. We welcome you back to the Toledo Sports Arena. The two teams are here at Perry Braun. Uh, the Saginaw General's a little late getting here. Uh, long, long bus ride, huh? It certainly seemed that way. They got here late for the warm-up, but now we're looking at the opposing goal centers. We have Francois Francosa, and then for the goal digger, general man Jerry Francis is very pleased with his progress so far. He's uh, played an excellent game last night in Fort Wayne in a 4-1 four to, four to one loss, I believe, and uh, using his words, it could have been a 14-1 deficit. Awaiting the announcement of the starting lineups here. Where are your starting lineups for the second game? Go to Paul Shaheen for the announcement of the lineup. At center, number nine, Bernie Gallant. At the right wing, number 20, Jacob. On left wing, number 16, Kevin Robinson. On defense, number 4, Ray Lynott. Also on defense, number 8, Jeff Pyle. And in goal, wearing number 1, Rick Knickle. Second off, coached by Dennis Trojay. And now the starting lineup for your fourth man, current West champion, Toledo Gold Starting at center, wearing number 20, D. Benoit. On the right wing, number 12, Mike Lowen. Yeah. 
manager of the Gold Diggers is Gary Francis. Coach number 18, Peter Mahavlik, assistant coach, Mike Reeder, and the trainer, Chuck Hart. Now, ladies and gentlemen, please join Don Connolly in the singing of our national anthem. the national anthem for this afternoon's contest between the Saginaw Generals and the Toledo Gold Diggers. And the Toledo lineup being shown as we run down it. It's been a long weekend for both of these teams, Barry. Sure has. Both teams are playing Friday and Saturday night this weekend. And Sunday, they're coming into here on a 2 o'clock in the afternoon game. And as a player, I always regretted playing an afternoon game because it disrupted your, your whole schedule of events. You like to eat early, get a little nap in the afternoon, and then come play to the rink, come to the rink and play a game. You admit it, it was the nap you missed, right? It was the nap I missed, never the food. We are underway. Benoit at center, and it's dumped into the Gold Digger zone, making the turn there. Start moving it up ahead. Waddell had it out at center ice. It'll be the Generals once again controlling. Picked up by Lanat, he'll swing it back in. I believe an offside call on the Generals. Smaller ice service here at the sports arena. And not uncommon for an opposing team to come in, I think, and be called offside a bit more than normal. Certainly, the, uh, the area between the blue lines is much smaller than you would see in other arenas, which makes it very difficult for timing of your wingers, especially a team like Saginaw relies more on speed and finesse than the Gold Diggers, which is a bump and grind team in the corner. Aldridge will be taking the face off for the Gold Diggers. Gallant will remain on the shift for the Generals. Waddell back in his own end. Between the circles, they get it back out. Falkenberg quickly. Dalton starts working in, makes the turn. Looks back. Falkenberg trying to work it in the corner. Still moving it along the boards behind the net. Into the corner. Swings it out. Intercepted. And up by Slanat. Quickly finds Jacobs. Jacobs brings it in. Centering pass. Goes around, knocked back up by Falkenberg, looking for Del Cole, moving in. Slightly held up on the play by the defense, and Gallant did a nice job of getting back for the Generals, trying to freeze it along the board behind the net. Still no whistle, kicked along the board. Pile in there with Falkenberg, along with Del Cole and Gallant. Still working it, Jacob finally for the Generals, starts to move it up ice. Gonna be held in at the blue line, nope, bounces across there, again fires it in, far corner, and Lenat picks it up once more. Line changes for Toledo, and that allows Lenat to move up ice. Only 13 skaters for Saginaw, so you're going to hear a lot of the same names for the Generals this afternoon. Knickel kicks it out into the corner. It'll be controlled there by Pyle. Quickly down, shot taken. I do, and that goes wide at the point. Knocked out by the Diggers. Driscoll trying to chase after it. Lenat cuts him off and clears it out of the zone. Move again, moves in. Amazola, nice beat on the side. Open net, and it's one nothing general. As Camazola got a nice pass back and had wide open net. 
sure did. It's a beautiful give and go type pass, and this arena you're going to see a lot of touch passes. Noonan slides it across to the empty net, and Jimmy Camazola, he doesn't even miss his bat, and he's going to miss an ocean out there. So one nothing here. The goal coming one minute and 46 seconds into the first period. Face off underway again. Hunter along his own blue line. Trying to move it ahead. Add it briefly to Bernie. Then into the corner. Hunter makes it back up. Tries to set it up. Shot taken and a save made by Knickel. His defense helps him out a little bit. Starts to bring it back up. Newman also getting the assist on that. But not on the inside. The right off side. Somebody inside. It'll go to Lawn. Lawn keeps it ahead. Had Hunter. Hunter can't control. Toot back in his own end. Feeds it along the blue line. Over to Davies. Davies into the zone. Blossom working on to the left side. Puts it behind the net. The nickel there settles it for his defense. And Pyle brings it out to the near side. Diggers trying to work it in front. They've got it over to Benoit, and he tried to feed it off onto the side, but Knickel jumps out and smothers it before the Diggers could get a shot away. Good job of forechecking on the Diggers' blossom. Uh, Benoit right here getting an opportunity. Still fighting hard for the puck. Gets it off his cage. He cannot slide it across to, I believe it was Falkenberg there. No blocking for it. And uh, I think you're going to see a lot of this post checking type style until they get the puck legs out, and then they'll start opening it up again. Talked in between uh, periods, or will be hearing an interview with Lee Blossom, but he talks about hanging around the net and being able to knock it in. Face off, and the Generals will bring it up. Delabio gets the round. No, stolen away. Nice play by Waddell. Couple guys that played their collegiate hockey in the Upper Peninsula. Blossom brings it in, sets it up in front. It'll be cleared by the Generals. Benoit back out to the point, sent back in deep. Working out there, Pat Ethier along to the near side. Generals trying to work it around, clearing it. No, it bounces at the blue line. Holmes will finally take control and breaks out two on two. Backed out by Franzosa. It'll clear into the stands and we'll have a face off in the Toledo zone. One nothing. Taking all on top. One thing Toledo's got to keep doing is using their size and their body here to keep wearing down the Saginaw team. It's the team that just come off the bus, put on their skates, and out for a warm-up. It wasn't a long warm-up, and it wasn't an opportunity to get themselves stressed out. But here, Toledo's got to take, take control of the boards in the center ice area, make good crisp passes, to try and get one early again, get back on it. You know Saginaw, when they get the first goal, they dominate the game set on. So it's up to the... Gold Diggers to get the equalizer here. Falkenberg on the faceoff, started it up by Toledo in possession. Aldred off to Del Cole, gives it back again. Aldred behind the net, tried to come back in front, still loose. Pyle will knock it wide. He gets checked on the play, but the Generals move it out to the red line, where it's again two, picking it up for Toledo. Circles, waiting, still with it, at the blue line. Moves it across, picked up by Falkenberg. Nice drop pass. Alfred tried to move in. Backhand shot will go wide. The rebound. Toots going to hold it in at the blue line. Holds on to it. Fires it for the net in front. Del Cole and it's saved again by Knickel. As I was talking about, this is what the gold diggers have to do all game. They have to put a lot of pressure on the defense and then try to create their own turnovers here. Here, Toots finds the handle on the board, and all he's trying to do is just get it at the net. And here we see number 14 for the gold diggers, John Del Cole, not, not quite able to hang on the puck, had he would have been one-on-one -on -one with Knickel. Face off will be down in the Saginaw zone. Hunter doing the honors for Toledo. And we get uh, Jacob starting out a little bit early. Face off drop. Gallant gets it back to his defenseman, Lenat, behind the net. Moves it out onto the left wing, held in by Hunter briefly along the blue line. Generals get it across, dump it in. Once again, it's Jacob sending it in. Mayer goes behind his net, comes up with it, tries to move it ahead to Hunter, just a touch behind him. Back at the neutral zone, Hunter will dump it in as he hits the red line. Caram's in front of the net, to Nickel. Gives behind. Waiting there as Howells takes it. Along the line, Jacob looking again for Lenat. It'll fly through and be taken by Robinson. 
Love down on the far side by Driscoll. Driscoll with the circle, moves it off. Shot taken, it's on target. Rebound into the pads of Knickel and regained once again by Bernie. That's on to the side. We've got a general without a stick. The line trying to control it to Jacob. Lifts it up into the air. A bouncing one will not back with his stick. Gets it out to the center ice area. Robinson turning. Touch back in his own end. Retreating. Mayer to the blue line. Fades off to the right wing. Puts it in immediately. Sent back out. Don Waddell bounces it to Mayer. Mayer sends it into the zone. Dribbles off of Lenox's stick. Put back again. Bernie brings it in. Everyone on side as Lawn had to get back across. Trying to freeze it there. Gets the face off. They get it clean. Lawn moving in. Falls down. In front. Backhander can't be controlled by Waddell. Picks it back up. Still with it. Fires it into the corner now. Going to try to retrieve it. Waddell to Lawn. Lawn in the corner. Waiting. Still waiting. Gives off. Back to Waddell. Shot. The lead hit the post. And it's sent the length of the ice. We should get an icing call. Comes back, making the touchdown at Whistle Sound. And we'll go back into the Saginaw zone for the faceoff. Once again, this is what Toledo has to do. They've created their own scoring opportunities by forechecking a lot, throwing the board, moving the puck well. Francosa having a quiet night so far. Only two shots attempted on him. While the Saginaw goaltender, Rick Nickel, has been very busy so far with nine attempt shots at him. And they'll face off. To the left side of Nickel, love side of the young goaltender from Saginaw. It's brought out on top by Toledo. They backhanded. Blossom waiting around the net. Turns and fires the shot. It'll go wide. Benoit there as well on the weak side of that shot. It'll roll back out. And Ethier picks it up. Has to move into his own end. Almost gave it up to Dubé. Now does, moving in front. General set it down, trying to pop the shot. Noonan had it, but could not control the trigger on it. And it's again Toledo moving up ice. Dump it in. Jeff Pyle will pick it up for the general. Pyle sends it along, trying to work there. Comes back. Dubé watching. Instead, it'll be the Toledo Gold Diggers with Benoit sending it down low. Blossom looking for it. Eludes Pyle. Backhander put into the pads there. Is moving across with Lawn. Generals. Trying to buy some time for Knickel. Noonan breaks in, three on three. They try to move it into Doobie. It's cleared off the doorstep. And up ice with it again is Blossom. Rink wide onto the left side. Lawn skating in, goes behind net. Lawn still with it, waiting for the trailers to move in. Waddell there. And it'll bounce back out center ice. Set in. Back to Mahavlich. Pete Mahavlich skating again here tonight due to the injuries and the amount of time that the other players have had to play. He's got the jersey back on. It's Waddell behind his own net. Brings it up. Muscles the man off the play. Aldridge will get it out. Here's Mahavlich picking it up. Mahavlich backhands it. Trying to go through the middle. Couldn't get the pass completed to Aldridge. And the generals move in. Delayed offside going to be called. And that gives Waddell the time to move it up. Tried to feed it in, intercepted, taken back. Here comes Delabio. He loses it. And again, it's Aldridge for Toledo. Hits the red line, dumps it in far corner. Knickel behind the net. Backhanded again, moving up Noonan. Feeds it onto the near side. Chris Delabio keeps it to home. Home shot blocked by the defense. Frozen along the board. Mahavlich hits it free and takes it into the corner. Cross ice, going to be intercepted, set up in front. Aldridge can't get the handle on it. It bounces off the board. They bring it ahead. And we get the two-line pass called against Toledo. Our first look at Peter Mahavlich out there on the ice. He's wheeling and dealing out there, but couldn't get the offense started. One thing we should talk about is, is keep educating our listeners exactly what a two-line off offside pass is. The puck cannot travel from the blue line to the red line without, without it uh, being touched beforehand before it reaches that red line. It's a little confusing, and it sometimes slows down the play, and there's a big uh, debate whether that should be initiated in the rule system or not, or go to the college hockey where there is no such thing. Face off, and it's set in on target. Franzosa makes the stop on it. Driscoll tried to slap it to control it. Shot taken by Lanat from out at the red line, and Franzosa again holds on. The 
lone goal scored by Saginaw here as we have 11 minutes and 40 seconds remaining in the first period of action. Face off along the red line. Robinson turns, cranks it into the Toledo zone. Ransosa shovels it off onto the side. Mayer behind the net. Going to be intercepted and swung around again. Wound around the boards. Driscoll up with it. Over to Hunter. Hunter lets it slide through. Bernie will turn and fire it into the general zone. Holmes behind. Driscoll trying to battle for it. Falls down. And again, Holmes comes up with it. He sends it the length of thinking will get icing again when Mayer comes back and makes the touch on it. I believe that's the strategy Saginaw's going to use. As you all know, traveling on a bus, you got to take some time to get the bus legs out of your system before you get into your freewheeling type skating style and Saginaw will, uh, will use. You're going to see a lot of uh, icing to relieve the pressure that, that Rick Rick Nickel might feel uh, if we'll keep putting this pressure on him. There you see his goal against the average of 3.53. Very good, but not quite as good as the counterpart there in Pang. It's just under three for the season. Excellent average in this league. Goaltending, you would have to say, is a strong point for this Saginaw general team. Holmes swings it around the side. Sorry, I want to ask you about, talk about bus legs as it goes in front. And Nichols able to make the stop on the slow roller by Benoit. Only 13 skaters for the generals today. And you mentioned the bus legs. It seems to me about the time you'd get rid of the bus legs, fatigue from just skating too much would start setting in. Naturally. And also, in addition, these teams are playing the third game in, thir in three days. So even more for Siegel set in. It's going to be interesting to see how this, how this goes as the game goes along. And they wonder why the coaches run them so hard in the preseason as Benoit freezes it along the boards, along with Blossom and Canazola, who had the general goal. Lee Blossom certainly has a scoring touch. Up with it, Benoit shot and knocked down. Benoit gets the rebound into the corner, spins around. It'll be two. Fires it. Knocked down by the defense and sent long. Moving out of the net, Franzosa wants to get there before Dube does. And offside called as it clears the blue line before Dube could move onside. That's the importance of a goaltender that can skate like Franzosa can. He can come out and be like the third defenseman to save your back there in case of uh, an attacker coming in. Like Noonan had that opportunity just a minute ago. Faceoff will be neutral zone. And it's sent behind the net where two controls. Starts working around the side. Moving it ahead. Toot still in control to Benoit. He's got Blossom on the left side. Instead drops it to Lawn. Lawn trying to back off with it. And finally loses possession. Is up with it again is Dube. Dube to Camazola. Nice check on the side. Noonan gets hit. And that draws Camazola offside. One thing with the size of this arena, you're going to see a lot of people running into each other just because it's dimensions. It crowds everybody into the middle, and it doesn't. It takes away from the opportunity for the left wingers and right wingers to stay wide and create their own scoring opportunities by using burst of speed and throwing a puck in an area. A disadvantage for Saginaw and an advantage for Toledo. I have to believe that Mike Greer and Peter Mahavlis, the two coaches, are just telling the guys, hey, hang in there. We've got the domination of the play, even though the scoreboard shows the one nothing deficit. But it hasn't been for a want of moving it around. Mahavlis on the faceoff was able to draw it back to Waddell. Waddell sends it out of the zone, trying to go after it. it was Falkenberg. Couldn't come up with it. It's lifted up into the air. Diablo giving chase along with Holmes. Delavio in the corner will not get to it again as I think it's Holmes that got it there. Ethier steals it back, move it across to Del Cole. At the red line, feeds it into the zone. Be controlled again by Horacek. He fires it off to the side, gets it right back. Horacek against the board, gets it back in. Waddell to Ethier. Blue line pass up to the red line, hits it and dumps it in. Caroms out. A little higher than I think he wanted it to. Del Cole goes to Waddell, trying to give it on a give and go. Held in. Apparently so. Picked up by Falkenberg. Couldn't control it or he would have been right in front of the net with it. Del Cole in the corner, being ridden there by Horacek, trying to get the face off. It breaks loose where Pyle picks it up. Pyle looking. Still waiting. Falkenberg and Del Cole doing a little hawking right now. Going to try to flush him out. They'll bring it out to the near side. Lenox. 
sends it long, going the length of the rink. Icing going to be called. Taking the touch on it. Whistle sounds as each year came back to initiate the offside. You brought up an interesting point earlier when you're saying that assistant coach Mike Reeder is probably just telling his players, keep pacing, keep putting the pressure on. I think you're exactly right. A team like Saginaw coming into this building, the the aura about Toledo Sports Arena is known throughout the International Hockey League. It's got a great reputation, a great history to it. So what they have to do is just keep wearing down the Saginaw team. The goals will come. It's more important to keep, keep the pressure on them and not give up a goal by becoming impatient. Face off in the general zone. Aldred and uh, I believe it's Miles are going to be asked to leave. Bernie will move in for Toledo. And it looks like Robinson Rock Bernie gets it over, shot taken, goes just wide, hung up on the back of the net. Picked up, set up in front again, can't get a shot away, however. Driscoll is there, Aldridge trying to put pressure on, Toot will hold it in, sends it along the board, far side. Pile up with a check hard at the blue line, and falls on top of it, forcing the face off. Good, solid check, as Pyle skating with the head down, and suddenly keeps it from the very start. And that's exactly true. It all through hockey, you're taught to keep your head up. We're looking at Bernie Gallant, the victim of that check. When, you, when you're coming out to the blue line, and in this arena, the defensemen are going to be standing up. And here, here we have the opportunity by uh, off the faceoff and Scott Bernie. Once again, the importance of faceoff. Control them, control the action, and control the play. And the diggers do that. Generals, however, get it back, send it long. Icing going to be called again. Mayer back for the touch on it. And with 8.17, we'll again go back to the general. Certainly say that Gold Diggers have been playing in the, the uh, Saginaw into our left here, both the periods so far, Glenn. That makes cleaning up in between periods a lot easier. The bench of the general talking it up as we get a good shot of Pinnickel finding position on this face-off. Aldred had it for a moment. It's picked up, however, and brought up ice by Jacob. He'll send it in. Settled by Franzosa. Sends it off along the side. Going to be picked up by Aldred. Works it to center ice area at the red line. Tries to dump it in. Offside called as Bernie was just ahead of the play there. Picked up the wrong skate is what happened. Hope you'll stay with us in between periods as you had an interesting chat with Peter Mahavlich. We'll have Don Waddell and Lee Blossom in between periods one and two. Introduce you to some of the players as well as the coach. Player coach, I should say. Guy Benoit, one of those featured in between periods two and three, sent the face off in. It's immediately brought back out. Noonan with Duke, two on two. Diggers cut back, shot along the goal line, and it's picked off the red line and sent long, almost to nothing there. The puck has to clear the goal line, and the icing call will come back to the Toledo end, but right now, Mike Greer and uh, Pete Mahavlich have to be happy with the icing instead of the two nothing. Sure, and that, I think that's just inactivity on Francois's part. He had a quiet night, and great camera work, and you see the puck just paralleling the red line, not going across it. And Franzosa is probably just sitting there saying, hey, I gotta keep my legs together here. We're only down by one, but let's stop making two. Here we see two, a nice pass from Newton coming in, and there's the puck sliding right across the goal, right, right parallel to the goal line, but never across it. Noonan in the corner trying to dig it out with Benoit, taken by Duve. Duve tried to backhand it in, and nice job by Benoit, stealing it away. Picked up again by the Generals. They work it on to the left wing, Noonan there. Along the board, by the circle. And it'll be Benoit moving up. He's got Blossom, leaves it for Lee, makes the turn at the circle. Backhand shot goes wide. Boy, Blossom again right there looking with Benoit for any kind of a rebound. Puts behind the net. On top, quick shot by Waddell, loose in front. Can't get the trigger pulled on the rebound. As Nichol did a nice job of sending it off onto the side instead of leaving it directly in front of him. Ethier trying to move around Noonan. Ethier sends it into the zone. Del Cole charging after it. Add a piece of it. Can't control. Again, sent out center ice. Pete Mahavlich 
trying to control at the red line. Does. He's got Del Cole on the side. Comes across offside, Paul. We talked about the goaltending. Rick Knickel. And this is just in the month of January. Giving up just 1.9 goals per game. Awesome. When, that, when a coach sees that, he knows that a goaltender is playing very well so far. And all he needs to do is try to get his offense and get two or three goals. And he's almost assured of a victory then. This is the fourth meeting between the two teams. It's sent out to the blue line. Or a check. Over to Pyle. Pyle dumps it in. It'll go to Mayer. Puts the touch on it. No one on him, so he'll move it behind the net. Still with it. On the side. Working there. Del Cole goes back in. Fransosa on it. The Hobbitz from Ethier. Balkenberg carries it across the blue line. Puts the brakes on. Feeds it back. Wanted the Hobbitz. Got behind him. And Delavio carries it in. On the corner. Looking. Two down on the whole way. Sent behind. Mahavlich goes down. Takes the player out with him. We've got a number of players down. It lays loose. Horacek tried to get up and get to it. Couldn't make the play. Tootin Mahavlich along the near board. Up to Del Cole. They'll make a line change. Balkenberg doing some hawking. Allowing the rest of the diggers to make that line change. Aldred can't work it. And it's sent long where Toot takes it. Everyone on side. He'll dump it in. Line change complete for Toledo. Knickel behind the net, leaves it there. It's sent out long. Howes doing the honors there. Aldred waiting. Bernie will pick it up instead. Bernie backhands it back into the general zone. Sent long. It'll tear him against the board and into the Toledo zone. And again, we'll have icing called with 5.09 left to go. Seen some good end-to-end -end action so far right here. Both teams are starting to open it up a bit. And... They're starting to create their own scoring opportunities. One line that I'm really impressed with so far in Saginaw General is the line of Duke, Noonan, and Camel Gold. They seem to be all over the end down there. And DeRoche must be very pleased with the way that that young line is progressing so far. Camel Gold only nine games into the season so far for Saginaw. And uh, he's a kid from all my area in the Vancouver area, the British Columbia on the West Coast. He must be very pleased with his progress so far. He's got his fourth goal of the season here, playing his 10th game. Face off will be in the general zone. Aldrich and Gallant. Yeah, they're going to kick Jacob back a little bit farther first. Drop. And it'll be Lanat. Makes the turn. Starts it up ice. Being harassed from behind, but still in control. Sends it in way offside with Jacob. He was already over to port side on that one. And that's just the eagerness of the wingers again. Trying to loot a checker like that. You hope your defenseman gets it in a little earlier. And uh, here he is, the mascot of the gold diggers himself, Mr. Digger the Duck. Entertaining some of the fans here. Is that how you dance too, one? Um, I don't dance. <laughs> Face off will take place near center line there. Going to be controlled by the general. Sent in, Franzosa. Watching as it's picked up by Waddell. Can't clear it. Shot taken. Glove down and sent behind again. Waddell. Ill-advised pass. And covered up by Francosa. Driscoll brings it in. He gives it off to Aldridge. Trying to make the turn. Crank the shot. Four. We're tied at one. Nice job of holding on to the puck by Aldridge. He picks up his fourth goal of the season. And uh, from an ill-advised pass, Aldred receives a puck from Driscoll at the blue line, comes in, and from a bad angle, snuffs it between the legs of Knickel, who up until this point was looking very steady and very sharp. See here, Aldred, from almost a near impossible angle, it's, it's not one of those goals that Coach DeRoche would like to see. For Pete Mahavlitz, ties him up 1-1 with 4.38 left in the first period. Nice job of holding on to it, though, and making the defenseman and the goaltender commit before making the move. We're tied at one. Benoit sends it in. Two on one break. Shot taken. Rebound. Blossom can't get to it. He does. It's stopped in. Uh, no goal. They're going to call. No goal. And Toledo very unhappy about that. I'll tell you, Lowen made quite a move at the blue line. While Lanat put the puck between his stick and his skate. Went right in. John I think what we're seeing is the referee Norquay signaling a, a no goal. I think he's that's Blossom, 
checked it in. And our fine television crew up on top of everything. We're going to see the free play here. Blast is coming in on the right part of your screen. Puck coming off his lower left skate and into the net. And as you know, you're not allowed to use that. You can only knock it in with your stick. Well, or if they don't catch it, you can use that. Well, you can do anything you want when, you, when they don't catch you. We're seeing the huddle over there. We're seeing the Saginaw guys going, no way, no way. And the Toledo guys saying, that was it. That was the break. But we're tied at one. Toledo that close to taking the lead here. And if you want to see how you feel when you get a goal called away from you, Blossom, he just, he can't believe what's going on here. <laughs> I'm sure he's saying, come on. I love that, that change. Of, I love that change of expression there from euphoria to totally livid. Benoit, another shot. It goes wide. Blossom again was looking for the rebound. Benoit and Blossom along the near board. Working high, trying to dig it out. And finally, whistle dead there. He certainly did lift his crowd up considerably. Back to back, almost back to back goals in a matter of 35, 40 seconds. And now the crowd's getting into it. 409 left to play here in period number one. The face-off. Benoit sends it into the corner, trying to battle for it. I've been impressed with the strength of Benoit. Noonan cranks one long. It'll bounce off the glass behind. Dube holds it in. Benoit up with it. Wanted to bring it over to the side to Blossom. It couldn't make it. It's sent out of the zone, and that'll draw the generals back on side. Waddell, or Davey, that is, loses it. Davey brings it across. Offside called by Camazola. And as you said earlier, this is the fourth meeting between Saginaw and Toledo so far this year. Uh, Saginaw won the first one. No, excuse me, Toledo won the first one uh, here at home on the 25th of October, a 7-3 victory. Toledo then lost the next two battles, 3-2 overtime loss to Saginaw, and then followed by an 8-2 loss. So they're eager to get the series back to uh, 500. And again, we can't emphasize enough that need to get points in move into position to secure that playoff spot for Toledo. Set in from the red line by Mayer, right on top, trying to clear it off. Falkenberg battling along the board, can't control it. DeLabio brings it in, carries it across the blue line. Waddell had it briefly, set on top, can't clear. Pyle cranks the shot, loose in front. Delco up with it. We've got a delay call coming against Toledo. And I think it's going to be Mayer going off two minutes. First penalty of the game as we have 3.13 remaining in the period. And Mayer coming off a couple, a couple of days of rest due to an illness. And he's signaled off for high sticking, I believe, on front of the net after the play. Here it comes, taking DeLavio down. Uh, I think he's just telling him to stay away from the crease yeah. by goaltender. Because his name's Franzosa and you don't touch him. The Saginaw Generals have scored 31 times on 153 power play attempts. That's a, just a hair over 20%. Toledo, on the other hand, in killing penalties, about the same 20%. Face off, we are underway. Toledo killing a two-minute minor here on Mayer, and it's sent long, deflected by Falkenberg at center ice. Lenat trying to work it out. General very patient here in the first 20 seconds of this man advantage. Waddell diving for it, can't get to it. Jacob will take it. Off to Robinson. Robinson out on the point. Controlled there by Lenat. He puts it toward the net. It'll carry him behind. Jacob will track it down. Far corner. And we get a whistle. Interference going to be the call against the Generals, I believe. Jacob getting whistled here, and that'll negate the power play. I believe what he did was, when he was coming across the net, he tried to set up the old-fashioned basketball pick on uh, Lido number eight, Neil Davey, and he tripped him up inadvertently, but still the same, whistles it off for two minutes for interference, negating the power play, and an opportunity to go up by a goal uh, in the uh, end of the first period. So Toledo gets a break there. Benoit will face off as we are four on four. And Toledo eventually will have the man advantage here. Barring another penalty, we hit the 235 mark remaining in the first period. 
Davy tried to control it. Franzosa stops. Skating in on it. Gallant, as Waddell holds it behind his own net. Be interesting to see how the game opens up with the four on four and who's got a little more speed. Up ice with it again. Davy carries it along the board. Crunch there. Benoit trying to help out. Davy back up, comes up, sends it on top. Waddell can't handle the bouncer. Now he'll crank a shot. Saved in front. Rebound still loose. And it goes just wide. General can't clear it. Benoit backhander that goes wide. Lawn puts it toward the net, and Kaneko will jump on it this time. You don't want to give a goal up with just 157 left in the period. Well, the rule would swing the momentum back to Toledo. Scramble in front of the net, and Lowen just poking at it, knocks it free from Kaneko. Lucky that Jeff Pyle was sitting right on the doorstep instead of the gold diggers. Well, they could be up 2-1 at this point. Good job by Waldell. I'm not impressed the way he's playing. He's all over the ice trying to create his own scoring opportunities. And there you see the puck coming out harmlessly to Jeff Pyle who steers it away. Pete Mahovlich on the faceoff here. We're still four on four for another 44 seconds. Shot taken by Ethier. Goes high and wide. Rebound. Falkenberg on top trying to beat Mahovlich. Pete along the board battling for it. Still working there. It's knocked a little farther up. Pete still trying to work it. Sent long. Breaking in. Noonan on the fly. Cranks the shot wide. The rebound out to home. Back again behind the net. Toot trying to track it down. Mahavl is running some interference for him. On the far side. Ethier again to Mahavlich. Pete between the circles in his own end. 120 left in the first period. In six seconds, Toledo will have the man advantage for about a half minute. Mahavlich at the blue line. Gets by one. Toledo back at full strength. Mahavlich works it to Falkenberg. Back to Mahavlich. Pete sends it behind his back to Falkenberg behind the net. They've got Blossom in the near corner. Lee waiting, puts it against the board, out on top, Toot. We're under a minute in the period. Blossom back to Toot. Toot, a shot taken, rebound in front. Turning around, Blossom can't get the stick on it. Still loose, Mahavlich carries it behind. Mahavlich back out on top. Going to be controlled at the blue line by Ethier to Mahavlich. Into Blossom, backhander, no. Rebound, Holmes will send it out long. Picked up just out of the penalty box. Breaking in quickly, trying to make the stop with Jacob. He gets hauled down from behind, and that'll be a penalty. Called on Pat Ethier, but it all things considered, not a bad penalty for Ethier to take. Good penalty on his part, stopping Jacob from almost a sure goal on a breakaway. Toot just hooking him down at the end here, coming on the left part of your screen. Jacob, good move to the net, good strong move, but Toot pulling him down at the shoulder, hooking two minutes. I apologize to Pat Ethier, Toot getting the penalty, not Pat. Pat says, I have enough trouble out there. I don't need your help getting me in the box. Good job by the Pluto Gold Digger power play, though, early before that. Knickle, a couple of good saves, robbing Blossom right high in the slot. As you know, he's a sniper out there with the Gold Digger. This penalty should carry into the second period as there's 30 seconds remaining in period number one. Face-off, and an important face-off for Toledo to force that penalty to be carried to the second period. Hunter and Gallant in the Toledo zone. They get it out of the zone all the way back into the Saginaw end. Between the circles, it's picked up by Pyle. He stops being hawked there by Toledo. It's sent up into the stands, and that will not help the cause of Saginaw with just 17 seconds. Again, if Toledo can control this face-off, they should be able to finish off the period. One thing we talked about at the beginning of our show was Jeff Pyle, the leading scorer for the uh, Saginaw General, normally a left winger. They moved him back in defense. We can only speculate, but I think this is short of bodies, and this is going to take away some of their offense. Aldred on the face off, trying to control it, sends it over to the blue line. 14 seconds left in the period. There he is, Jeff Pyle. We were just talking to Howes, intercepted. It'll be controlled by Aldred, and he should be able to finish things off here. Four seconds left. He'll give it to Waddell. Two seconds. Freezes it up. Jacob puts the touch on it, but the buzzer sounds. So we've gone through a period here. And unofficially, Toledo with 25 shots attempted. And Saginaw, just 11. So I think that's a pretty good indication of the domination that Toledo had, but it does not uh, represent itself on the scoreboard as of yet as we're tied at one. 
in between periods one and two, but we're going to uh, break here. And when we come back, my partner up here, uh, Perry Braun, will be chatting with the head coach of the Toledo Gold Diggers, Peter Mahovlich. As we pause our score at the end of one complete period of play, the Toledo Gold Diggers won, the Saginaw Generals won. My guest today is Coach Peter Mahovlich of the Toledo Gold Diggers. Coach, 14 years in the NHL, four Stanley Cup teams, two international uh, team Canada victories with Russia. How do you feel your career has gone and what you've accomplished in the NHL international experience? Well, I think uh, as a player, I, was, I think I had a pretty successful year considering that the average uh, span is five or six years in the National Hockey League. So as far as the playing end of it goes, I think uh, I, I'm pretty satisfied. I can sit back and look back and say, yes, uh, I did a pretty good job or I had some good teammates that did a good job. Yeah, for years I followed your career as a, as a youngster growing up on the West Coast. Now you're into the coaching end. And we were talking earlier about the International League and how you feel its progress is and where you'd like the Gold Digger uh, organization to go to. How about your comments on that? Well, I think uh, the whole league has changed uh, drastically, especially the age difference. I think uh, the league has gotten a lot younger. And the National Hockey League are looking for places to put players so that they can develop. And I think uh, here in Toledo, we're trying to build a strong organization in that area. We've got a lot of young hockey players. And as the year has gone on, I, I found that our hockey team has improved. And I think as the year goes on, it'll even improve uh, more. As, uh, as And uh, if, if we can get into the playoffs, uh, which I think we, we will, uh, I think we're going to be a very, uh, very top contender when the year comes down to the end. I know growing up, we heard a lot of things about the International Hockey League, how it was just a has-been area for people that were just wanting to prolong their careers. Now, as you said, there's a young influence, especially of college kids coming up, or young underage draft picks going and want to get in a taste of the pros. Um, how do you feel their progress, their progression is? Well, uh, that, that's, uh, you know, one of the areas that, uh, that we've got, especially. You mentioned uh, college hockey players. I've got uh, uh, seven graduates uh, playing for me, and... Uh, if Glenn Haley would have been here, he, it would have been eight. I mean, he was on his way here, and he got turned right around. And, but, uh, I, you know, I think they, they need this experience. They've got to play a lot. They've got, uh, they've got to get confidence somewhere, and this is exactly where the league is, uh, an area to, to get some confidence. And my guest has been Coach Peter Mahalo. I'd like to thank him for taking time and stopping by with us. We'll be back again with more Gold Digger Records. And again, we welcome you back to the Ice Arena. I'm Glenn Cerny. Joining us now in between periods, the captain of the Toledo Gold Diggers, Don Waddell. And uh, Don, I've had the opportunity to see you as a college player and now here in Toledo as a Gold Digger. And uh, first of all, playing the years at Northern Michigan with Rick Conley as your coach, how did it prepare you to play in the pros? Well, my four years there at college helped me extremely well. You know, in college, you only play twice a week, but you get to practice four days a week. And at that age, when you're 17, 18 years old, I think the practice helps you a lot more than playing the games. And mentally going to school playing hockey it prepared me for uh, playing the 82 game schedule it has to be a lot of fun playing in the eye you run into a lot of the ex players that you've played against both in uh, juniors and in college yeah there is there's quite a few college players more and more my first year there's maybe three or four in the league that was back in 80 81 but these days there's i, I would say probably a good 40 percent are college hockey players when you see him on the ice he's wearing a c on the jersey he's the captain and what kind of duties does that uh, make for you I just try to be a leader on, on and off the ice, you know, in the locker room. You try to keep everybody going, keep the attitude positive. And on the ice, you want to work as hard as you can to be a leader. You know, the guys see you work giving 100%, then I think they look upon it. If I can do it, you know, they can do it too. So I think uh, just the leadership is the biggest thing. We wish you the best of luck, uh, both in today's game as well as the rest of the season, and uh, keep them rolling. Thank you, Mark. We'll be back in a little bit with a uh, conversation with Lee Blossom right after this. Once again, we welcome you back to today's game. Joining us now in between periods, Lee Blossom. And Lee, first of all, we welcome you to this cable cast of the Toledo Gold Digger games. And uh, the International Hockey League presenting some new challenges to you after playing uh, college hockey at Boston College. And can you kind of compare the two experiences? Well, yeah, it's, uh, it's a lot. Uh, it's, it's the same a lot because uh, college games are very fast. You know, it's different in a way that 
the college game, I think there's a lot more skating. The international league is a lot more physical. Uh, of course, you know, you're using the red line, which makes a big difference. In college, you know, I have a wide open game because you're not using the red line and, and forwards can really break out of the zone quicker. But uh, the college game, I think, is, has really developed in the last few years. A lot of players are going pro and are being very successful. Uh, the International League has a lot of good players. I've run into a few that I played against in college that, uh, you know, in Boston or out here against Bowling Green, Wisconsin, a few teams like that. So there's a lot of college players playing in the league and playing professionally. But uh, the, the two games are similar in a way, but uh, in the same regard, they're, they're different in that I think the college game is a little more wide open. On this team with the Gold Diggers, there's players from Canada and across the United States as well, yet there seems to be a good camaraderie with the team. Uh, your feelings on that? Yeah, there is. You know, there is. Uh, everyone knows that uh, the American players are starting to uh, come into the game more and more. Before, you'd find maybe one or two Americans on every team, and now there's a half a dozen. Some teams have as many as ten. And, uh, but as far as the fellows go, uh, you know, they're just, they're all in it together. The team, our team, the Pluto Gold Diggers are very close. Uh, you know, we have, I think, uh, we're one of the teams that has uh, more Americans on the team than a few of the other, other teams in the league. But they get along very well, and uh, it's good to see because, uh, you know, you from different backgrounds from different countries, and it's nice to share those experiences. Of course, the ultimate uh, goal has to be for you playing the game to get into the NHL. Uh, what do you see as the area where you need to improve on most? Well, right now I'm having a lot of success at scoring goals, and that's uh, basically my forte. Uh, and things are going pretty well for me that way. I've tried to improve on my defensive skills, and uh, Coach Mahovlich has worked with us. Uh, we stress defense, and, and through good defense uh, comes good offense. And by playing sound defensive hockey, then uh, you're going to get your chances and opportunities down at the other end. So I think uh, I worked hard in the offseason at trying to build myself up so I could be a little better in the corners and, and tougher along the boards. And hopefully uh, I'm improving in that area, and hopefully it'll get me to the National Hockey League. Certainly wish you the best of luck, and Lee Blossom, we thank you for taking the time to talk to us uh, during today's game. Going to be back with the statistics and prepared for the second period of action when we return to the sports arena. Glenn Cerny and Perry Braun high atop the Toledo Sports Arena here. We're at the end of one period. It's Toledo 1 and Saginaw 1. And Perry, why don't we move right along to the first period statistics. As you can see in front of you, total shots dominant by the Toledo Gold Diggers that time. 25 total shots on Rick Nickel and only 7 mustered by the Saginaw. But uh, as you're pointing right there, off target. 11 shots off the target by Toledo. That only makes Rick Nickel's job a lot easier because they're not getting it on the net. As uh, we can see, six saves for uh, Fra Froza, Franzosa, excuse me, and 13 for Rick Nickel in that period. Two penalties issued to the Blue Gold Diggers, and only one to Saginaw. Power plays both teams, unable to score. However, uh, Saginaw will be uh, having the man advantage as they uh, start the second period. Taking a look at the scoring, Saginaw got on top first, and uh, Perry, why don't you take Camazola's nice uh, beat here and score? Good tic-tac-toe here. Uh, Doobie back to Camazola. First game against the Little Gold Diggers in the Saginaw uniform and not for goal against them. Van Toledo replied later in the period at the 15-22. Driscoll over to Aldred. Bad angle shot. And I think what, what they were doing, you commented on it, they just froze the goaltender. Make him anticipate the pass and found between the legs of Rick Nickel. Tied it up 1-1. And uh, the play at that point was starting to turn in Toledo's favor. And then a, a goal call back, a Blossom goal call back because of uh, Parent kicking it in. Uh, and we're all tied at 1-1. Couple of penalties uh, escaped late in the period and giving Sagan on the man advantage. We start this, the second period. Again, uh, shots on goal. Nickel had to face 14 and Franzosa seven. So territorially a good uh, period for the goal diggers hanging in there trying to come out with four points out of a possible six on the weekend they won friday night here and then lost last night at fort wayne and i think the the uh the spirit of this team they're facing the three top teams in the uh, international hockey league right now muskegon beating them friday going at fort wayne leader in the western division losing to them 4-1 in fort wayne coming back to against saginaw they're sa saginaw second in their division uh, in the Eastern Division of the International Hockey League. So that's to be quite a, a thrill for them to play to face the three top teams in the International Hockey League right now. Again, I refereed it this afternoon. Jim Norkay, the linesman, Brian Campbell, and Larry Lulich. Uh, you know, and I, what impressed me during our pregame 
talks with the players and the coaches and general manager Jerry Francis, the positive attitude by the Gold Diggers as they prepare. We're underway. Pyle has it over onto the side. Move it back over. We've got a shorthanded situation for Toledo. Again, they were killing all but about 20% of their shorthanded situation. Nickel has to stop that carom off the board. Gives it off. Pyle, normally a forward, playing defense this afternoon to Gallant over to Jacob. On the near side, Robinson started to charge in, had it taken away, and Gallant back in his own end. A minute to go in the power play for Saginaw. Pyle brings it in, and way offside was Gallant as he tried to maneuver around the teammate. Just touching on that theme of positive attitude here, in the interview with Don Waddell, he was stressing the positive aspect that, that he was trying to lead on and off the ice as captain. I think Peter Moravlich also said it best, too, that the, the International Hockey League is going through a major change right now. Younger players, good, good technical skills, and we're going to see some excellent hockey action in the years to come. It's put in on a dribbler on net and cleared the length of the rink. No icing called. Stopped by Knickel, also killing the penalty for another 40 seconds. The Gold Diggers are trying to snap it away. Could not. Falkenberg again. Camazola carries it in on the left wing, looking to feed it back on top. Lenat. Lenat over to Noonan. Nice drop pass down to Camazola. He still holds it at the circle. Left side. Back over. Noonan right in front. Score on the rebound and a power play goal. Did it go off the stick of Noonan or Dube? They were both around there. I think Dube got it on the uh, on the carom. Good tic-tac-toe pass again by this young line. Camazola over to Noonan. Noonan walked right out in front. And there you can see the puck just harboring in. Uh, you're right. Noonan did knock it in with Dube making sure right there. Again, Francosa being beat right between the legs. It appears to me both goaltenders are anticipate, anticipating the pass instead of taking the first initial shot and worrying about their defensemen or their forwards coming back and taking the uh, open men on the side of the net. That almost looked like it went off the back of the leg of Franzosa. Have another drop here. Get the official announcement. For Noonan, his uh, 27th goal. Brian Noonan. He's got a goal and an assist now this afternoon. And Camazola also with a goal and an assist. Back in the way, we're in the Toledo zone. Lenox puts it behind the net. Working over onto the far side, blocks him up with it. Wanted Benoit, couldn't find him. It'll go back to the net. Mayer there, backhanded, start moving up. It's Blossom. Blossom hits the red line, dumps it in. Lawn giving chase. It'll be Knickel going to the near side. Trying to freeze it up, and we get the whistle. 8.17 left. You're just joining us. Saginaw, a power play goal moments ago. And again, it's the early in the period again. Saginaw putting on the pressure, getting a goal, early goal in the period, taking the 2-1 to one lead. That's one pass again by Camazola to Noonan. Camazola, first time he's faced the Toledo goal diggers and having a whale of a game with a goal and assist already. Ethier, a shot, and it's gloved down by Knicko. Lawn trying to go in after it. Control, however, by Saginaw. Move it up on the far side. I think it's Delavio who just got sandwiched there. Somehow remains alive. Moving along the blue line. How a shot into the glove of Franzos, and he holds on. He, he being John Franzosa, from all accounts we got of last night's 4-1 loss, played an incredible game. Sure did, up in Fort Wayne. Bruce House is getting the shot. And good thing Francois is covering up because there's number 22 for the uh, Saginaw Gears, Warren Holmes, standing on the doorstep. As you were saying, Francis, General Manager Jerry Francis, was singing high praise to Francois. And all statistically wise, he's making 87% making of the saves or the shots that are coming in on him. Faceoff will be in the Toledo zone. Gallant working against Aldred. Toledo trying to get out of their own end. Swing it around to the near side. Slap down there. Picked up by Toot. Gets it out quickly. Aldred moving up on the wing. Knocked off the end of the stick. Still trying to pick it up. Bernie in there trying to control. Bernie still with it at the circle. Bernie along the near board. Finally loses it. Again, Aldred trying to control, but Pyle goes behind his own net. Out on the side, Jacob. Jacob still with it. Turns and starts up ice. Aldridge cuts him off near the red line. 
Waddell steals it. He'll turn it up ice. If they hurry, could have a man advantage. Do not. Waddell now brings it out man. Tried to put it between the legs and nutmeg. Robinson didn't work, and it's two on two the other way. Go on at center ice. Back to Pyle. Pyle loops it in, a bouncer. And Franzosa is wisely going to hang on to that one as Jacob was coming in. You were talking to praise for that one line, and as I look at my score sheet, Camazola, a goal and an assist. Noonan, a goal and an assist. And Duke, two assists. Seventeen oh one to go. Two one. Sagan on top of Toledo here. Still a lot of time. Pete Mahovlich centering now for Noonan. Drop. Del Cole in the corner trying to pick it up. Off to Mahovlich. Pete dancing with it. Finally gives it off. Del Cole along the red line as it poked away. Regained by Davey. Del Cole fighting for it, trying to freeze it is Camazola, and he'll get the face off near the red line. So far, the period is once again going just like the first period. Saginaw getting on top early, closely checking this little gold digger, hoping it's to, uh, as we saying before, Nickel only allowing 1.92 goals against uh, in most recent, most recent history. Falkenberg sends it around. Out long at center ice. It'll be tracked down. Again by Toledo. Making the turn, starting up. Mayer, center ice. Del Cole. Feeds it in. Mahavlich back across. Offside call as it came back out to the neutral zone. And Peter Mahavlich not able to get back. Scout day today. Scouts from surrounding area. Janelle Carver, Marblehead, Ida. Well, it's Swanton, Perrysburg, Balmy, and Rossford. I imagine there's some folks in the Perrysburg, Balmy, Rossford area watching, looking for familiar scouting faces in the crowd. Falkenberg kicks it in to the general zone, trying to control it. Went to Hunter off of his stick. Pyle just lifts it up out of the zone. Getting around, Davies shot by Camazola, and Franzosa makes the glove save. Took a bounce. And off and running was Camazola looking for his second goal. Good job by Camazola, Camazola to get by the defense in here. Once again, a bouncing puck. Tucks it neatly between his legs, gets a quick shot off. Good save by Franzosa coming out and challenging the shot, cutting down the angle, making it more difficult to find a spot in the open net. You know, the other thing that everyone, I don't want to say, was complaining about, but part of the problem that Toledo's had has been the injury bug. And, as you well know, it's tough to get any kind of rhythm on a set line when you're playing with different folks every every day. Franzosa shovels it off to the corner on the shot between the circles. Comes out on top, stolen away. Here comes Toledo. Benoit has it poke checked away at the blue line. Good defensive maneuver. Blossom backhands it, and it'll bounce into the corner. Controlled by Lenat. Lenat trying to go around Lawn. Intercepted by Blossom. Wanted to go back to Lawn. Lifted high in the air, gloving it down. Waddell had it, but they claim his hand came across the blue line. Offside, Toledo. And again, with the injury bug, we have uh, Donnie Murdoch coming close to recovery and getting back to the gold diggers. Once again, Saginaw, 13 players on the ice. We can only speculate, but that's going to be difficult for them. And at this level of hockey, your parent organization for the gold diggers, the Los Angeles Kings, dictates a lot of policy on what players you are going to have. Waddell sends it around behind. It's controlled by Howell. He puts it against the board, get it out center ice. Keith here, backpedaling. Holmes intercepts. Holmes comes up. He's got Horacek with him. Set it right in front. Francosa makes the save. He kind of glanced behind him just to make sure that he had all of it. Pretty play by Warren Holmes to uh, Chris Delavio. Uh, Holmes wheeling and dealing there, standing Waddell up, and just throws it into an area and lets Delavio skate into it and just flexes into the goal. As you said, Franzosa looking around, seeing if it got behind him, which it did. Good for them. Would have been a 3-1 game instead. It's still 2-1 with 15-22 to go in the second period. And the faceoff, Gallant, along with Benoit. And we get Waddell moving a little early on the far side. Benoit gets it to Waddell. They put it across their own goal. No one there for our second to take advantage of it. Back behind, quick shot, score, Gallant. 
on a good quick feed on the side by Jacobs. Pretty play, Galan left all in front of the net by himself. Jacobs just sticking in between the, uh, the stick and the body of a sliding Waddell coming out at him, and there's Galan all by himself. A defensive breakdown. I don't know whose responsibility it is, whether it's East or skating in number four, as you see late in the screen, or the left winger at that time, number 10, Steve Driscoll. A breakdown in communication, obviously. Gallant left in front of the net by himself, slams it home for 3-1, Saginaw lead. Brad Sosa a little frustrated, and rightfully so. Not much a goaltender can do when the guy's standing on the doorstep like that. Offside call on the... Second He's doing face-off. Go on. Twelfth goal of the year. Jacob and Howell slamming assists on it. As Howell now controls it, just having gotten the assist. Right at the blue line, left alone. Generals had to move on side. Now they'll dump it in. Going at it behind the net, trying to pick it up. Spinning back to the near side again. Driscoll sets it off. Controlled again. Working there. Around into the corner. Saginaw. Jacob, who just got the assist. Takes the play to Aldridge. Aldridge against the board. Out to home. Shot taken by Pyle, and it's kicked out by Franzosa. Good hard shot by Pyle there. Aldridge, as the diggers trying to clear it out of the zone, start moving it up. In front of his own net. Moving ahead. Aldridge. Aldridge works. Three on three. They shovel it off onto the left wing. Bristol trying to chase after it. Pyle sends it off. Shot taken by the goal diggers. And it's wide on Mayer's blast. Moving in, Jacob again, puts on the brakes. Nice drop pass to Watt, saved by Franzosa. Cleared back out to center right. Good job by Franzosa stopping that rush. Pyle in his own end. Jeff starts it up. Camazola onto the side, Noonan. Noonan waiting, holds up. Shot taken, save again by Franzosa. He holds on tight. 13.47 to go, second period of action, 3-1. Once again, that young line of Camazola, Noonan, and uh, Tube doing a good job. Noonan faking, holding the puck, and getting a good shot on Franzosa, who is equal to the test, making a good stick save and smothering the puck for no rebound. Good shot of Peter Mahovlich on the faceoff. Still trying to control it. They'll send it behind their own net. Eat your up with it. Off to Falkenberg. Dave sends it out of the zone. Pyle retrieves it there. Shovels it up ice, moving in, Dube a shot, kicked out, brought back in by the trailing players, and Davey takes it off the doorstep. Mahovlich lets it fly through, ball lets it roll, goes back again behind the net. Pyle being watched by Mahovlich. Little intimidation there. Falkenberg, nice job, we get a whistle though. He may get called for holding, and he will. So Dave Falkenberg, it looks like, will be going off for two. I believe Lanat's going to go off for holding. Is it Lanat? I saw him get a hold of Falkenberg's hand as he was going for the puck on the uh, Peter Mahovlich doing some fine forechecking. Had Pyle throw it to the net. He okay, just did the left arm. And uh, if this was football, the yellow flag would be coming down on a 15-yard assessment. So Lanat's going to go off and give the opportunity for Toledo to get back in this game with a power play goal. With Toledo having possession of it. I thought they were going to call it on Toledo on a delayed call. But the Gold Diggers get a chance here to draw within if they can capitalize on the power play. 0 for 1 this afternoon in the power play opportunity. Face off will be where Toledo wants it. In the Saginaw zone to start things off. Benoit looking for Falkenberg, leaves it for Waddell. Waddell goes to the slot. Don beats over to Falkenberg, trying to set it down low to Blossom. In the corner, Blossom picks it up, carries to the circle. On top, Waddell along the blue line. Back to Blossom, overshot him, intercepted, and sent the length of the ring. Lawn will go back to pick it up, and Horacek will do the hawking. They let him come through. Some open ice and Lawn carries it in. Dumps it into the corner and will chase it down. Good effort by Lawn. Comes out on top with L. Back again, Lawn 
On the near side circle, Waddell gives from the right wing to the slot. Blossom waiting, has been wide front, back behind. Falkenberg looking against the board to Lawn. Lawn again to Waddell. Waddell faking back to Lawn on the side. Blossom still with it. A minute to go in the man advantage. Back behind, Falkenberg controls it. They still have Benoit set in front. Blossom to Waddell. He'll crank a shot, deflected. When Pyle trying to control it can as Blossom retrieves it. On top again, Waddell sends it down in front. Knocked up in the air. Turn around, slap it once. Picked up by Blossom. Shot saved by Knickel. Back behind, Falkenberg again on top. Waddell sets it in front, deflected just wide by Benoit. Blossom and Benoit behind the net. Guy Benoit controlling. Back again, Blossom. 22 seconds on the man advantage. Shot knocked down by the defense. Waddell will hold it in. Now it's stolen away and sent out. For a check on the drive. Carries it in. Forced off the play. Franzosa sends it out long. And offside. Now we got a penalty going to be called on Lawn, I guess. There was just nine seconds left in the power play. Good job by Toledo controlling the play, but unfortunately, Knickel up to the pass. Although an, e an equally good job by Saginaw to not give them the good shot. Listening to you through that whole process, you know, all you kept saying was Benoit in front of the net, Benoit in front of the net, but they couldn't get the puck to him. He's been very deadly on the uh, power play. We're going to see the uh, tail end of the power play where Lon gets the roughing penalty. Horacek making a move on him. He just got a little too physical with Horacek. And I think if we, if we continue on a little more, he just gives him a little love tap saying, don't you go by me ever again. And uh, negates uh, nine seconds left in the power play. And now the goal diggers will be at a disadvantage. Mayo shoots it up. We're four on four. Well, now we... Yeah, we should be four on four for about five more seconds. As Saginaw, one, four, two in the power play. This is their third attempt. Ah, four minute penalty on Lauren. Double minor. Face off, Mahovlich trying to clear it out of the zone. Dube wanted to hold it in, but Tuke came in and said, nothing doing. Saginaw now back at full strength for three minutes and 44 seconds. They'll have the man advantage here. Up ice, Dube gives it off. Camazola, Camazola carrying it, shooting it, it across. And slapped once by Mayer, trying to get it out of the zone. Cannot, two on one, three on one. Back shot, score. Again. Camazola, or was it Dube that got the goal? I think it was Dube. Dube it was, and it's 4-1 on a power play goal. The key key here was not getting the puck out of the zone. Noonan just shoving the pass to Dube, and Dube sticks it upstairs, top shell for the Chiefs, making the score 4-1. A great three-on-one opportunity here. Camazola cruising around the left side of that for a rebound. Pull key. Gold Diggers not getting it out of their zone. Pyle just knocking it back in. Noonan to do. Boom, it's four to one. Making it uh, still. They're on the man advantage for uh, negating one of the two minute minors. So another two minute power play. Waddell kicks it in. And up ice. Moving in, shovel it back onto the side. Intercepted by Toledo. Mahavla tries to clear it out and does at the red line, waiting. Pulls it back in. 4 1 our score. Toledo trailing by a hat trick here as we reach the midway point in the contest. Sent long, no icing will be called here. One and a half minutes to go on the man advantage. Bringing it up. Lenat. Lenat off the board. Noonan. Noonan. Gets hit from behind by Falkenberg, but controls it to Lanat. Lanat shovels it in. Franzosa gives it back to Waddell. Don will crank it long. Down on his knees. Stopped there by Knickel. He'll give to Pyle. Pyle holding. Comes out on the left side. Waits at the circle. Moves it ahead. Camazola. Falkenberg took a swat at it, but couldn't get it back. And it's Duke. 
in the corner, trying to freeze it up. Aldridge gets it loose, kicks it out to the point, held in by Howes. Back again along the side, Noonan to Howes, shot taken, it'll go wide. Cleared, no, held in. Zolito couldn't get it out of the zone. Duke goes down, Davey winds it around the board, Pyle holds it in, stolen away, moving up ice. Zolito on a two-on-one shorthanded. Falkenberg shot, knocked down, loose in front and saved by Knickle. Good shorthanded opportunity. But again, Knickle got the high bouncer. They caught Saginaw on a line change during that power play. Aldred and Falkenberg. Nice pass to Falkenberg. Waddell streaking on the right. Falkenberg electing to shoot. Good idea. You don't want to fool around too much with that puck when you get in that area. Just let the puck go and hope for a rebound. Nickel knocking it straight up in the air. Aldred swatting it down. Nickel freezing it up. Still 24 seconds left in the power play for Saginaw. Toledo doing a good job this time killing the penalty off. Sent in by Mahavlich. Steals it away. Still shorthanded. Quick shot as Falkenberg tried to poke it in. Couldn't do it. And again, Lanat over to Jacob on the near side, Robinson. Robinson starts up ice. We're going to get a penalty call, and we've got everything going. Mahavlich took a high stick. And they're going to let them go toe-to-toe -to -toe and take care of themselves. I'm sure in the measure of the take, Steve Mahavlich would have the advantage in just about every category. Experience, reach, size, weight. I think what the old Peter's doing here, he's just going the old move. He's going to try and get some spirit into his team here. They've been ragging a little low here. And uh, fortunately for uh, Steve Jacob, he was just on the end of it. Peter Mahavlis doing a great job uh, behind the net getting out the ball to work. Puck comes loose, runs into Jacob. Jacob swats him back. Next thing you know, we got a little dance routine going out center ice. Right. For 39 years old, still got some moves, doesn't it? Sure does. It's, uh, it's amazing how the fans are getting into this right right away, and I really think that's why he did it. He's got to get his team fired up somehow. Saginaw's been, been putting his uh, bit of Toledo gold diggers in spirit. They've been controlling all aspects of the arena, the boards, the corners, the front of the net, and he's got to get his team fired up. And H. I believe got five minutes for fighting. I believe both players got uh, coincidental penalties, two for high sticking and five for the fighting. So they'll be sitting down for the remainder of this period. 9.04 left to go. So those penalties at 10.56 mark. Face off drop. We remain five on four with the coincidental for another three seconds. In around behind Toot, trying to control, shot taken, save. Gallant fans on an attempt, and up ice with it. Come the Gold Diggers, three on two, working it along. Aldridge stops and turns, sends it back in. Falkenberg tied up by Lanat, and Gallant turns it around. Gallant at the blue line, comes in, gets hit by a pair. Toledo regaining it. Dave Falkenberg behind his own net. Some nice stick handling to retain possession. Comes over to Toot, Toot starts it up. Red line will dump it in. Pyle on the drive, comes back, held in by Falkenberg. He sends it back behind the net. Lenat picks it up, hits Mayer as he steps in off the bench. That's a nice way to get back into the game. On the far side, looks like Noonan trying to control. He retreats now with it. Benoit trying to go after it. Lenat back into his own end to Pyle. Pyle sets it out, center ice, Waddell. Waddell along the red line, drifts back to his own blue line. Now puts it in, Lenat picks it back up. Benoit drifts in, and offside called as Blossom jumped over the bench and was offside. Certainly more life and revered in the Toledo team now as they uh, start taking the action to Saginaw. Instead of in the previous part of this series, Saginaw was taking the action of them, keeping friends so very busy. Rarely said Rick Nichols named this series. He bets Saginaw to an excellent job, keeping Toledo outside the high percentage area. Face off sent back to Lanai. Comes back onto the near side. They try to move it up. Mayor. Couldn't control, Blossom knocks it down at the blue line, Benoit, Benoit still with it. Benoit moves in, sends it around behind the net, 
Nichols punches it there to Lenat. Lenat back around behind the net. Coming out of the near side. Delavio. Then Y intercepts. Tried to feed it into the middle as he had Blossom cutting toward the net. And Waddell intercepts. Gets it back. Tried to center it again to Blossom, and Lee couldn't make the turn quick enough. Benoit, everyone on side, off onto the side. Blossom again, puts it toward the net. Knickel will send it wide. Lenat behind his own net. Being watched by Benoit, Blossom steals it to Lawn. Lawn can't control. Waddell stops it, fires a shot off the side of the net. Almost had a 4-2 game as Waddell cranked one up, but was inches wide. And a giveaway by Bruce Howes right on the stick of Waddell. And Waddell, big pranker, got the uh, crowd into it. <laughs> they sound like it went in the net, but as it was, it was on the side of the net. No goal, still 4-1 Saginaw. Into the hockey game here, but come March, it's Tiger baseball again on the cable system. And hope you'll be joining us for those contests as the Tigers look to get the world championship back to Tiger Stadium. Marky Anderson and crew, they should be heading south here in a couple weeks. Face off drop sent behind the general's net. After it, Hunter takes the man but can't control. Noonan back up on the left wing. Noonan pulls up, looking for a man trailing, tried to put it toward the net, gets it back. Noonan still with it. Noonan dancing, circle, knocked away by Davey. In behind, Driscoll trying to control it. Back to help out again is Bernie. His shot goes wide by the Generals. And again, set right up in front. Quick shot, score. The second effort by Noonan pays off. As for Noonan, that's his second goal of the afternoon and his third point. Good forechecking job by Jimmy Camazola in here. Noonan and Camazola again working on a tic-tac-toe. Jimmy Camazola working around the net. Good save by Franzosa. Nobody there to pick up Noonan in front. Stuffed it up top, making the score now 5-1. Again, hard work around the net, trying to stuff it. Franzosa picking it up. Noonan all by himself again. And Franzosa, man, he's just not getting any help at all from his defense. Two, three goals in period have happened right in front of the slot area, right in front of him with no defense picking up any of the Saginaw players. And again, it's that front line all getting points on the fifth goal. Davey has it, dumps it in, Toledo offside. That one line on left wing, Camazola, a goal and three assists. At center, Doob, a goal and three assists. And at right wing, Noonan, two goals and an assist. Certainly earning their paycheck tonight. Galan on the face off, along with Aldred. It'll be Ethier back in his own end. Starts it back. Falkenberg lets it slide through. Picks it back up, shot knocked wide. Karen's up on the glass. And it'll be brought out again by Noonan. He leaves it to Gallant, back to Noonan, give and go. Tried to stuff it in, cleared off the doorstep by the Toledo defense. Aldred, as it rolls in front of the net, gives it off onto the side. Davey starts it up. Davey feeds Falkenberg. Falkenberg along the blue line. Falkenberg still with it. Stripped away by Noonan, who comes up this time on the left wing. Gives to Gallant along the board. Goes behind, Del Cole will pick it up. He gets bumped behind the net, trying to gain it back, cannot. Noonan there, tried to tuck it in. And this time, Franzosa was ready for it and makes the stop with 520 remaining in the second period. Good, good hard work by uh, Brian Noonan again in front of the net, trying to slam it around. And Bernie Gallant waiting again in the slot. Saginaw's doing a good job of trying to find the open man in front of the slot. You see uh, Gallant cruising in again, but this time he's picked up by Pat Easier. Franzosa covering up, making sure nobody's going to touch the puck this time. To remind you, uh, January 22nd, kids' night with the Toledo Gold Diggers. Chance to bring the youngsters out to the game. Face off on top. Howell sends it back in deep. Picking it up again. On the side for a check. Intercepted by Benoit. Can't clear it. And again, Franzosa. You now it almost looks like a 
reversal of the first period where Toledo had all the offensive moves and weren't able to score. The difference being in the second period, Saginaw's got the offense and they've been able to capitalize. So far this period, shots attempt of Toledo only 13, Saginaw 22. So they definitely have carried the play so far. And Digger the Duck, you got to start getting these crowds into the game here. Help the goal diggers out. See if he can skate up and maybe uh, get one in to get him close again here. 5 1 or score. Brought up on the side, held in by Horacek. Benoit fighting with Horacek. Benoit gets it off the stick of Franzosin, starts it up two on two. Just overshoots Lawn. Bounces back out center ice. Horacek working there. Feeds it off onto the side. Lenat makes the turn. Lenat sends it off of DeLabio, and then he picks it up. DeLabio along the blue line. Puts it on top. Holmes looking for some help. DeLabio can't control it back out to the neutral zone. House feeds over, taken by Holmes on the red line, sends it in on the carom. Franzosa behind the net to Toot. Toot waiting, feeds on the left side, Waddell. Don Waddell gets crunched by Dube on the play. Noonan will pick it up. Noonan back out of the Saginaw zone. Benoit looking for it. Lawn following up on the play, picked up by, I believe, Noonan. No call as he got tripped up coming through traffic. Toledo turns it up ice. Lawn, out man, three on two. Lawn will carry it in. Lawn has a trailer, tried to feed it off to Hunter. Shot taken as he got it right back, saved and knocked up into the stand by Howes. 3.44 to go here in period number two. Bruce Howes, a native of Lewis, Mr. Bridge, Columbia on the west coast. He's a uh, big, strong, sturdy defenseman for Saginaw. He uh, made a good good choice uh, there, flipping the puck up in the stands, relieving some of the pressure that uh, Lon had created in the uh, Saginaw end. Face off will be taking place in the Saginaw zone. Hunter, along with Noonan, Noonan puts it into the corner, throws in there, Hunter trying to get it back, it'll be held in by Mayer, tried to backhand it, again, Hunter, nice job, picks it up, good stick handling, off on the side, Bernie, a shot into the pads of Knickel, Bernie makes the turn, face off circle, gives it back down, they try to set it in front, no one there to take it, it's sent the length of the rink, icing going to be called, Back to touch it, Davey, and we'll go into the Saginaw zone again. Great opportunity by Bernie there. Good job by Hunter and Stu Bernie, or Scott Bernie, excuse me, doing a tic-tac-toe coming in on Rick Nickel. It's too bad Scott Bernie couldn't get the puck up in the air. Hunter doing some good work here. Brian Noonan, what a rare mistake today, not doing the man. Passing it over to Scott Bernie. Two on one, and he just couldn't get the puck up in the air for Rick Nickel, who made a great double leg slide save, keeping the score 5 1 Saginaw with only 3.19 left to go in the second period. Falkenberg getting it early on to the faceoff. We have Aldred and Bernie Gallant taking the faceoff to the left of Rick Nickel. Should get a couple guys out of the penalty box here in about 30 seconds as Jacob and Mahavlic were in for fighting five minutes. Aldred on the faceoff in the Saginaw zone. Working against the line. Drop behind the net, Pyle. Pyle loses control, Del Cole with it, trying to get it onto the stick and around. They move it over. Falkenberg behind the net. Del Cole comes through to help out on the corner. Hit against the board. Still battling for it. Del Cole fighting for it. Falkenberg picks it up on his backhand. Spins it back to the forehand into the corner. Trying to work it there. Fighting with it along the side. Falkenberg trying to kick it loose. Gets it over. Finally onto the side. Aldred works it along the board. Gets it right back. Finally Galat breaks out. Three on two. Here comes Saginaw. Moving on to the side, shot taken and scored as Horacek got position and took the big boomer and got, got it by Franzosa at 6-1. And all it was was just a simple pass off to the, to the right side and Gallant finding uh, just a streaking uh, Horacek down the right wing, stops, sees it off and beats it between the legs of Franzosa. Again, Toledo doing some great work in the corner, coughs it up, Gallant. Great three on two set up there. 
over to Horacek, and he just beats Francosa between the legs, who is coming out to challenge the shot, making the score 6-1 Saginaw. Another good look at it here, Gallant. King the defense went over to him, and Horacek teeing it off. Boom, right between the legs. Great camera work there. Into the corner, Lawn, as we are underway again, Lanat. Lawson trying to get it into Benoit. They put it toward the net, gets it right back. In the crowd, backhand shot, knocked away by Knickel. Blossom takes it away from Duke, stepping up, Waddell holds it in, sets it down on the side, Lawn going after it. It's hit hard, winding it around the board, brought out by Robinson, and on the far side, a two-line pass called, as soon as Duke makes the touch on it. It's amazing the way this period has gone so far, Glenn. Saginaw coming out, getting a quick goal, we thought, all right, Toledo, get back into it. So far, Saginaw has dominated this period, capitalizing on five goals this time and really taking the team and actually the spirit out of Toledo so far. And it comes onto the side, it's gonna be wound around the boards. After it, Del Labio gets hit by Blossom on top with Dell, cranks the shot, save, rebound, kicked into the corner where Lawn takes it. He gets upended, loses his stick. Lenat trying to freeze it. Comes up along the board again. Waddell, nice job, then fell and couldn't hold it. Set long, moving in, nice drop pass, Holmes gets tripped away on it. It's Lawn, looping it up into the air. It bounces behind the net. Horacek takes control, the captain of the Generals. Loses control, trying to regain it. Bernie puts it in, brought back out, and then dropped in by Howells. They send it way long. Icing going to be waved off, apparently. Waddell against the board. Bernie will pick it up on the left wing. Bernie, center ice into the zone, top of the circle. Bernie cranks the shot, gets it right back in front. And Hunter couldn't get it back to it. Two to shot. It goes wide. It'll go behind the net. Bernie again sets it in front, looking for Driscoll. Can't make the play. Waddell carries it across the way. A penalty call. Mahavlich and Jacobs come out of the box. And Driscoll will go back in in between periods. Kurt Calway, Dave Falkenberg, and Guy Benoit interviews. Get a chance to look at this. Kennedy Amazola coming out, and Driscoll just taking the feet out from under and with the law for two minutes for tripping. And at that time, Toledo was really putting on some good pressure on Saginaw. And all this does is take away the momentum again and gives it right back to Saginaw, who have looked very good on the power play so far this game. They are two for four with the man advantage. This one should carry over to the third period as we're under a minute to go in period number two. Falkenberg. Backhanded it, it was picked up. Noonan brought it in offside. And once again, the ever dangerous line of Brian Noonan, Jimmy Camazola, and uh, Roger Doom are out there again looking at Brian Noonan. He's having himself a whale of a game so far, Glenn. Based off drop, Kyle will pick it up. Red line. Falkenberg tried to steal it away, could not. Holmes winds it around the board. Davy tried to move it up, could not. Held on to, set in front. Duke deflected it, I believe. Pyle comes in deep to pick it up. Intercepted by Mahavlich. Mahavlich circles into his own end, gives it back to Toot. Toot moves it out. Falkenberg lets it slide through. Pyle retreats. Camazola. Camazola moves it up ahead. Noonan breaks in, sets up shot by the circle near side. Dipped across the blue line offside, going to be called. Let's see if we go back or if they give it to him in the neutral zone. We're gonna go all the way back to the Saginaw zone. 15 seconds left. Page 30 for Aquarium. Give away another $50 gift certificate for the membership. If you have the lucky number one, six, certainly hope you'll be able to see between periods again. One, six, three, four, five, even one. We'll be chatting with Dave Falkenberg Kind of on pins and needles right now. You'll find out why. Shot taken by David. It bounces up high into the air and is gloved by Nichols. Nichols sends it out onto the side. Intercepted. Center right. Camazola. Two seconds left. Got to get a shot away quickly. It hits Franzose in the shoulder and he goes down at the buzzer. That has to hurt. I don't care how much padding you have. Quickly over the board. Chuck Hart to take a look at him. He's skating off on his own, but he's obviously in a touch of pain 
Camazzola running out of time. It was a fine two-on-one opportunity. And he just whistled a shot up high off the uh, left shoulder, the glove hand shoulder of Francois. And that's got to get Trainer Hart uh, worried about that because you really need that extremity to start lifting your arm and reach up for those high shots that the uh, Saginaw Gears have uh, been throwing at him today. Once again, a two-on-one opportunity. And had there been more time, the score could have well been 7-1. Tell you what, there is a perfect clinic of why I would not want to play goal. A little bit on the power side there. I also want to remind you, we've got interviews coming up. We've gone through two periods of play, and we'll pause with our score at the end of two complete periods. The Saginaw Generals, six, the Toledo Gold Diggers, one. And we're back between periods here with my guest, Kurt Calloway. And I'm Perry Braun, and we're walking back, Kurt, from an injury here. What's uh, your diagnosis so far? Uh, right now, I just got the cast off about two days ago, and uh, they say another two to three weeks before I'm back on the ice. And Elmira College, New York. Now, uh, college hockey has taught you some various wonderful skills. Uh, scoring leader before you went out with an injury. Before that, over in Sweden, over at Roma, Sweden, I believe. Tell us your experience of that. What did you gain from going over to Sweden right from college? Uh, I gained a lot of experience skating-wise and uh, really the technique of the game. I uh, learned really developed by passing and shooting aspect of the game as well as the skating because the rinks were uh, a lot wider, a lot larger. And coming back here and playing, I found out it's really helped my game. International hockey, your first taste of it, um, our fans' first taste of it on television. How do you feel the league has changed or what do you see as the positive aspects of the International Hockey League? I feel there's a uh, greater diversity of uh, more talented players here. I, I've always heard different stories about the International League saying it's really a goon league, but now just seeing the quality of players here, it's, very, it's comparable to the American Hockey League in many, many effects. Thank you, Kirk. I'd like to thank Kirk Calloway for coming along and uh, being my guest uh, in the second intermission here. We'll be back with Glenn Cerny and an interview with Dave Falkenberg right after this. Glenn Cerny with Dave Falkenberg between periods here of our Toledo Gold Digger telecast. And Dave, first of all, welcome to our uh, telecast this afternoon. And uh, you've been around in a Toledo jersey for so long that uh, you almost qualify as a native Toledoan, right? Just about, Glenn. Uh, I've been here for six years now, and uh, it's, it seems like a long time. But, yes, definitely a native Toledoan. You know, when you take a look at uh, all the banners around here, you've had a part in a couple of them. Can you relate some of the experience of what it means to make the playoffs to the other players that perhaps haven't been involved in a Turner Cup playoff? Uh, definitely, Glenn. I think that uh, making the playoffs is a big thing. Uh, last year we uh, was the first time I missed the playoffs, uh, not playing in late May. So it is a, it's a great experience. We have a young team, but I think if we can instill that in us, all the veterans, I think we should do really well. One final question I have to ask. I understand you and Carol are expecting virtually any day right now, and uh, it's got to be tough to keep your mind on hockey a little bit. Yes, Glenn, it is tough. Uh, the sleepless nights have been coming uh, very regularly now, and uh, but I'm looking forward to it. Well, with a little bit of experience, if you think the sleepless nights have been uh, coming here lately, just wait until it comes home, and then you're in big trouble. Very big trouble. Again, good luck to you and the Gold Diggers in your rush for that uh, Turner Cup championship, and uh, we wish you the best of luck. Thank you, Glenn. We'll be back with more for you on today's telecast with an interview with Guy Benoit right after this. Glenn Cerny along with the leading scorer of the Toledo Gold Diggers, Guy Benoit, and we welcome you to our uh, telecast this afternoon. And for a gentleman who's got almost a goal a game, both last year at Drummondville and this year with Toledo, is there anything you can tell the, some of the youngsters that may be skating about uh, getting around the net and snagging all those goals? I don't know. It's kind of like it's. Uh, I, I call it natural talent. I, I don't think when I'm on the ice, I, I'm just standing in, in front of the net, and when I got a chance, I try to put it in the net. So I guess uh, I always did this and, and this, did this, and it's working this year, so I'm happy. Uh, your goal, of course, to get into the NHL. When, when you talk to the scouts, when you talk to the people, when you talk to your coaches here, what area do you feel that you need to improve on most? Uh, as you said, it's not my offensive play that I have to work on. It's my defensive game in my own zone, one on men, and uh, my toughness in the corner. That's what they're asking me to improve this year. One final question. Having a, a coach like Pete Mahovlich to, to coach you and to work with you on the ice, such a great all-around player, I have to believe having him with you and, and being able to learn from him is a great asset. Yeah, he's, he's uh, actually he's helped me a lot because uh, he was a centerman when he played in the NHL, so he knows the game, and uh, 
like, he's really patient with me because he knows that I don't, don't understand all the time and uh, he uh, explained me the trails two or three times and he wants me to understand and like, I guess I'm glad of it. It's quite obvious that when the pucks are on the net, you do understand what to do with it, though. Good luck to you and the Gold Diggers. Yeah, I think so. We'll be back with more action on today's telecast right after this. Putting the finishing touches on the surface here as we prepare for the third period of action. And Perry Braun, 6-1 our score as we have completed two periods. And Toledo's got to come out firing. They sure do. Uh, early in the period, we saw Peter Mohamed try to stir things up. But Saginaw responded by scoring five goals in the second period, totally dominating the play and taking the crowd right out of the game for Toledo. And earlier, my colleague in the booth, Glenn Cerny, had a candid conversation with Toledo Gold Digger General Manager, Jerry Francis. With us now, the General Manager of the Toledo Gold Diggers, Jerry Francis. And uh, first of all, after a lot of hard-fought games, it's got to be nice seeing the Gold Diggers battling back and playing behind Pete Mahovlich this year. Well, I appreciate that comment, Glenn. Uh, we looked long and hard and got Peter. We're very lucky. Uh, we've struggled this year with a lot of injuries. It's been a tough road, and uh, I think we're starting to come back. We win four or five and lose one or two, and uh, it's okay. That'll get us in the playoffs if we continue to do that. But the league's getting tougher, and, you know, it's not going to be easy. Uh, one of the things that I've, I've noticed in talking with the players here today and in the last couple of weeks is, is the camaraderie and, and the feeling of, of wanting to do well. And, and having someone like uh, Pete Mahoblet just, just has to do so much for you and... and uh, having the ability to get him out and talk to people and, and work with people has to be a real asset. Well, it has been. Uh, the uh, the uh, reputation that Peter carries is fantastic. As we all know, he's an all-star for the National Hockey League for many years, and uh, he does great with the community. He gets out and works with kids and works with the handicapped, and uh, people call constantly to have him appear at their programs and stuff. So it's been a real boost in the arm for all of us. We mentioned the uh, rush for the playoff slot, and I know you've got a lot of home games yet, and it'd be nice to see the sports arena packed and uh, have that seventh man on the ice. Well, I was in uh, Fort Wayne last night. They had almost 8,000 there, and it certainly makes for a better game for the home team, and we're trying to convince Toledo, and so we've got a great young team, and some of these people are going to be in the uh, National Hockey League in a few years, and it would be nice if they would come out and support us and see this team play, and I'm certain with we get 5,000 in this building, it's going to rock it, so we hope to, uh, they'll all come out and watch us play. We all know that the Diggers will be uh, driving hard, and hopefully we'll be able to hang another banner here by the time uh, summer comes along. Well, Glenn, I appreciate that. These guys are going to try very hard to do that, and all of us in the front office are going to do our best to fill the house for them. So I appreciate you guys being here today, and I want to thank everybody for watching today. Chatting with uh, Jerry Francis, the general manager of the Toledo Gold Diggers, and we'll be back with the third period of action for you in just a moment. And we've got about a minute 40 here before that period gets underway, and uh, Perry... As we said, 6-1 uh, score here that we have. And uh, statistically, again, uh, we saw sort of the flip-flop what we did the first period where Toledo came out and played a very, very strong first period. But uh, Saginaw had the upper hand in the second period. Uh, certainly, they certainly did. They controlled both ends of the ice. Total shots in the Saginaw, 26 on that. 15 off target. Uh, seven saves for the Saginaw goaltender, Rick Nickel. And on the flip side, Toledo, 22 total shots, 15 again off target. That's, that's got to be very disturbing to Peter Mahovlich. Uh, the many shots that aren't going off target, they're not testing Rick Nickel at all. Six saves for Francosa that, uh, in the second period. Penalty minutes, 22 for the period, a roughhouse period. Still getting the majority of those, 13 minutes uh, due to the fight penalty to Peter Mahovlich. And nine minutes for the Saginaw. Power plays again, Saginaw on the power play for most of the period capitalizing on two of those four opportunities. Toledo still goose egg at zero for two. And uh, Toledo will be finishing off the end of a uh, penalty here as we start the third period of action as Saginaw in the process of a power play. Scoring summary and uh, no familiar gold digger names on there, obviously. All Saginaw this time. And once again, Brian Noonan, uh, Jimmy Camazola, and Roger Doob uh, doing most of the business in the second period, as you were saying, a career for some. Noonan scoring a 27 to 28 goals in the second period. Uh, Gallant responding with his 12th, Doob with his second, and Horacek his 10th. And again, most of, most of the goals were not Francois' fault per se, but it happened right in a high percentage area, right on the slot, and he really does, did not receive any help from the Toledo defense at all. Both teams back on the ice now, and as we've heard said, Many, many times it's a team game, and you can't just blame the goal digger when you let him go in. Or the uh, goaltender, the goal digger, goaltender. We'll get that straight. Hey, that's three times fast. 
It's a Sunday afternoon. Imagine if this was a Sunday night game. I'd I really, really be in trouble. I really enjoyed your conversation with General Manager Jerry Francis. He hit it right on the head. This is a young team, and they're still learning. And uh, they are playing some good hockey. It's just that they're just not getting the break today. And it must be difficult coming back from Fort Wayne late last night, putting on the blades and playing a good bag on our team. And I do want to pass along that the Toledo Gold Diggers will be donating a dollar to the United Negro College Fund for every coupon that's turned in from the Toledo Journal. So check the at discount coupon for the game, the 22nd against Kalamazoo. It's also kids night with the Gold Diggers. So the K-Wings coming in. Risco will be in the penalty box, finishing his tripping penalty that he received at the 19-minute mark, so he'll have a full minute of power play for Saginaw. And we are about underway for period number three. Victoria drops it, and Kyle picks it up. On the side, Lenat. Lenat puts it between the legs, trying to control with Gallant. Nice job by Toledo putting pressure on, not letting him get started, and they'll dump it back in where Pyle controls. Pyle back in his own end. Pyle looking, waiting, hands it off. Up with it, Gallant. I've been impressed with the skating ability of Gallant, the center iceman for the Generals. On the side, Jacob puts it along the board. Controlled along the near board, still fighting for it. Believe it's Falkenberg in there for Toledo, and it is. Got a little bit of excitement waiting for him in the next couple weeks here with the birth of number one. Understand you're expecting number one here before long. And on my right-hand side, Statman Stu Roberts just learning what the No Sleep at Night's about. And while we're patting each other on the back, your wife uh, is expecting her third. Yeah, but this is the hat trick, so it's not <laughs> as big a deal. Face off, comes on and it goes behind the net. Knocked up into the air, Noonan up with it, Noonan working along. Goes another shot held on to by Brandosa. And again, we're we're seeing some good work by Brian Noonan, Jimmy Camazola, and Roger Roger Dube. They're putting a lot of pressure on the Gold Digger team, and once again, they're getting some good scoring opportunities. Mahavlich on the faceoff here. We'll be working. And speaking of birth, we have a birthday we're celebrating right now. Pyle will watch it go long as Toledo killing the penalty. Seven seconds left on the man advantage. Up ahead, Noonan on the wing, across the blue line. Working it around, sets it in front, can't control it. It'll be picked up again by Driscoll just out of the penalty box. Both teams at full strength here. Shot taken, kicked out by Knickel. Camazola puts it into the corner. Again, Driscoll trying to dig it in the corner along with Camazola helping out there. Aldred, Driscoll trying to dig it yet. Yeah, still working along the board. No whistle to freeze it. And it's kicked out by Lenat, who's playing without a stick. Along the board, put against. Working up ice, still in their own end. Camazola works it up, sends it into the Toledo zone. It'll carry him off the backboard. Dube touches it but can't control. Lawn brings it up ice. Lawn into the zone. Slapped against the boards. Lifted up high into the air by Pyle. It'll bounce back out. Davey picks it up in his own end. Across to the near circle. Two back behind the net. Davey looking, waiting. Sets it up. Nice pass onto the stick of Benoit. Carries it in. He still with it. Puts the brakes on, comes out to two, two, blue line pass onto the side, down low, centering pass, shot taken, goes wide by Lawn. Blossom again, has it in the corner, back to Benoit, backhand shot, through a crowd and deflected where Holmes will pick it up. Holmes waiting, now puts it up high, two, playing center field, grabs it, puts it down and dumps it back in. Good pressure by Toledo, this is what they need to do, pick up a couple goals here and cut into that 6-1 lead. Held in on the far side, put down, knocked once by Bernie and then sent long. Toledo making line changes. Icing waved off, Mayer picks it up. Mayer starts it between the circles. In his own end to the blue line, drifts off to the left, lifted up into the air, bounces toward the net, goes behind. Howes in the corner, bumped by Bernie, Sent out to the point. Shot taken by Waddell. Kicked out by Knickel. Mayer on the rebound. Puts it in. And this time, Knickel's going to hold on to it. And hold up play with 16.52 to go. 
good two or three minutes of end-to-end -end action there. Toledo putting on some good pressure. Mayer just slapping it back into the corner. Again, the liveliness of the boards and the sports arena here shows that the puck bounced right up, and Knickel gloving it like he's a shortstop. The face-off will be to the right side of Knickel. Mahavlich and Galan. Good shot of the drop here, controlled. Briefly by Toledo, Mayer a shot, trying to set it in front, cannot. Bernie and Driscoll along the far board, Lenat trying to freeze it up. Kicked out, controlled by Gallant, he'll put it behind the net. Coming in, Mayer to knock it down, generals start moving up out of their own end. Mahavlich back on defense this time, Gallant going with a backhander, goes just wide. Mayer picks it up along the far board at the right wing, Mayer sends it in. Going after it is Bernie and Knickel seeing a pair of white jerseys coming in. Decides he'll hold on to this one with 621. Absolutely no reason in the world for Saginaw to take any chances. It certainly is with a 6-1 league and Knickel is having a pretty uh, steady year so far. Only a 1.92 this last month. You see his uh, goal against average over the year, 3.53. That's fairly good in a league such as this where the Toledo goal on the other hand, are up around the four level. Well, and again, we want to repeat, in the month of January, he's given up less than two goals a game, Knickel has. Picked up on the fly, moving up ice. Robinson sends it in. Jacob trying to follow. Sent back out. Howes takes it. Back to Lenat. Lenat in his own end at the circle. Far side. Goes behind. Howes being watched by Del Cole, and it's knocked up into the stands, a souvenir for some of those in attendance today at the sports arena. And there's a lucky fan getting the gold digger puck, take it home with him, put it up on his bookshelf. Again, Toledo's gonna start pressing the action more and more, they're gonna have to start taking chances, and for Sagan, now that's gonna mean some wide open two-on-one opportunities possibly because the gold diggers is only 15, 57 left in the third period. They're going to have to start creating their own opportunities here and start beating Rick Nichols, who's looked very good so far. Well, that fatigue factor, I would believe, is setting in a little bit for both teams. Aldridge puts it out on top. Shot taken by Ethier. Rebound right at the net, up over the crossbar. We've got a pile up in front of the net. Play continues. On the side, Ethier had it briefly at center ice. It's picked up, trying to get untangled still from in the net. On the other end is Ethier, has it in the Toledo end. Knocked out center ice. Working it up ice, Falkenberg. Back to Del Cole, trying to go around, showing a good burst of speed. Lenat catches up to him in the corner. Set it down, Falkenberg playing without a helmet right now. And having trouble negotiating both the puck and the helmet. Set for the net, it'll go wide. Comes down onto the side, sent way long. Icing should be whistled here. Back to touch it is Davey. Whistle sounds. We'll go back with 15-10 remaining. And our score holding at 6-1. And again, the gold digger putting out some good pressure in front of the net. I think what they're doing is they're going to start crashing on that more and more. Rick Nichols going to see a lot of white jerseys and white bodies all over them. Here's a shot by Ethier. He's used to play against him at the University of Wisconsin. Falkenberg not quite able to get it up. Aldred knocking it and bouncing the puck all over Rick Nickel and then falling down upon him. Back to action. Waddell sends it in, trying to move it up. Diggers have it. And Wild was looking for some help. Back at center ice. Lee Blossom sent in. Retreating on the play. Generals now move it back out. Noonan quickly on the side. Camazola shot carries just to the side. Rebound bouncing in front on a shot. And up with it, Benoit. Howells will take it over. Sends it back in. Toot across the blue line. Noonan will have to wait for his teammates to move on side. Howells on the near side back into his own end. Blossom applying pressure. It goes to Toot. Toot into Benoit. Benoit carrying it in. Benoit at the circle. Nice power move. Sends it off onto the side. Shot by Waddell. Kicked out. Rebound taken by Toot. He cranks a hard one. Again stop. Rebound again goes wide. Blossom on the side to Lauren. Rebound Waddell. They can't get it by. Some incredible opportunities for the gold diggers, but cannot make it work. Toot back at center ice. Gives it over to Lawn. Lawn knocks it in. Will get line changes. Horacek controls. Bounces out long. We'll get an icing call here. 
And it'll give us an opportunity to remind you, late night with the Toledo Gold Diggers on Friday, February 7th. Pick up those discount coupons and come on out and enjoy the diggers. Good set of action there for Rick Nichols, showing us why he's got that 1.92 average in January. Shot by Waddell coming up here. Great save on the first one, and the rebound goes wide of the net there. It comes right back out to Lon, who almost drills it home, and there's Waddell picking up the loose rebound. I'm really impressed with the way Waddell goes to the open area to look for the puck. That was a good illustration of what being stonewalled means. As Knickel held him at bay, it's set up in front again. This time the defense helps him out. Going long, chasing after it, Delabio. This will go into the corner with it. Delabio, Heath here, takes it away. He comes around, Bernie, Bernie, over to Mayer, to Driscoll. Driscoll gets it out of the zone. Everyone on side, and the Generals will attack again. Horacek and Delabio coming in on it. Heath here controls it for Toledo. Heath here waiting, sends it against the glass. Bounces out at center ice. Floating along, brought back in, Delabio diving for it, deflects it into the corner, Ethier sets it off onto the side, Drisco, Drisco back to Ethier, Ethier along the near board, gets it out of the zone, Pyle lets it slide through, we've got 13 minutes left to play here, 6-1, Saginaw on top of the Gold Diggers, Oracek looking for Delabio, Davey knocks it down, back to Delabio, Backhanded into the zone by Horacek. Sagan all with line changes. And here comes Toledo again. Davey in control. Davey hits it against the board. It'll go behind. Knickel watching. Regain by Pyle. He's done a whole lot of skating here this afternoon, and he still looks strong. Loops it in. It'll go long. Franzosa watching. Set up in front. Quick shot. Cleared off the doorstep. Tooth there to help out. And it's over. He brings it up ice. Three on three, filling the lanes, moves in way offside on the far side, unfortunately, was Bernie. And that'll bring the whistle and we'll have the face off of the neutral zone as Scott had the full head of steam and couldn't hold up on the play. They had a good opportunity for a three on two. Aldred electing to straddle the blue line there with the puck when he's got Bernie offside. And you can see coming up, well, this is the play in front of that earlier. Good job by Franzosa getting his stick in front, breaking the pass in between Gallant and uh, number 14, Peter Horacek. And it's just, it's unfair that Aldred, uh, Scott Bernie went outside because Aldred had a good opportunity for a good shot on net. Here's Toot sending it into the zone, winds it around the board. Knickel settles it, starts it back up again. Toot trying to hold it in. Jacob gets around it, wanted to go to Gallant. Pass was behind. Pyle sees everyone on side. He'll dump it back in. 12 minutes left to play here. Albert off to do the near side. Trying to work with Del Cole. Set up in front. Nice stop by the Gold Diggers. Del Cole brings it into the zone. Still with it. Gets slapped on the play. Can't control it. Set in front. Looking for Aldridge. Risk, or Del Cole had it. Waddell back on defense now. Three on two. Here come the generals. Jacob straddles the blue line back, hands it to Gallant, and send it wide as Jacob could not quite control it. In behind. Aldridge feeds it over Waddell. Waddell carries it up. Waddell at the center ice area. Hits the blue line. Slows up. Tries to feed it. Has Blossom and Lawn heading toward the net. Foot behind, Blossom should pick it up on the near side. Defense gets their first rebound, comes in, shot goes wide on the follow by Lawn. Again, this line for Toledo applying good pressure. Benoit sends it around behind. Waddell will try to hold it in. It's Lawn back at the point. He steps up with it, backhands it in deep. Benoit in the far corner. He off to Lee Blossom. Blossom working behind. Waddell trying to hold it, gloves it down. Nice stop there, puts it wide of the net. Working, Blossom, back over, Benoit, wanted Lawn in front, turn around, Waddell, a quick shot, goes wide, rebound into the pads of Knickel. Keep knocking at the door. Benoit's got eight goals in the month of January, 15 points, Blossom with another 10 points on three goals, so, and Lawn with nine, so that threesome out there has been doing that all month long. 
And again, Toledo showing good pressure in the third period, and it's evident like this all for the month of January. Nickel coming up to the task again on Lon, goes right underneath him, comes right back out, and Waddell making a good spin around shot coming up here, and comes off the boards, and that shows how lively the sports arena boards are, and Lon just can't put a pass to crawling Nickel. For the month of January, Glenn, it's real interesting. Toledo has scored 60% of their goals in the third period, while the opposition has only scored three, three three to, to five percent of their goals in the third period. We get it going again. Waddell going to try to hold it in. Benoit does. Benoit puts it over to Blossom. Blossom had his back turned to the play. It bounces back out. It'll come into the Toledo zone. Up with it. Duke wide open. Man in front. Shot score. As again, going through the middle, Camazola picks up his second goal of the afternoon. And that's his fifth point. And Dube will get his fourth assist and his fifth point. And I, as I said earlier, it's the first time Smee Camazola has played the Toledo goal diggers, left all alone each year, electing to take the chance, and he just slides the back hand past the sprawling Franzosa. And again, a 2 on one opportunity. Dube, Dube throwing it back across the middle each year, making the diving sprawl, and uh, Camazola and uh, Noonan left all alone. As you said, his fifth point today. I'm sure Toledo wishes he uh, wasn't playing today at all. Ten minutes left to go, and it's Drisco bringing it up ice. Drisco trying to work it around to Bernie, and it's intercepted. Be brought back out center ice where Tooth picks it up to Mahavlich. Mahavlich. All the way back in the mayor. Noonan in there watching the whole time. Up ice with it. Mayor to the center ice area. Coke checked away by Pyle and now dumped back in. Jeff Pyle with a fine play at center ice. We get a whistle and we get a slash called. Is it mayor that'll be going off? That will not help the cause here. Down 7-1. I just think Mayer was trying to do a little too much there. You see him uh, drop the puck off, forward check, forward checking, and setting the screen. He just turns around, and although he didn't make contact, that's one of those intent penalties that you call, the referee will call, where contact may not have been made, slash or, or across the stick across the man's body, but the intent to do, to do that, uh, that action cost him two minutes. And as you said, it's not good for the cause of Toledo. Almost looked like a retaliatory play there that earlier he had taken a hit. Pyle right down the middle with it. And Franzosa makes the stop. Maybe in there helping. Quickly turn to page 33 of your goal post program. The time of the game like this for Toledo can't afford to have a man shorthanded. Second period. Uh, Saginaw, two for four on the power play. You don't need for them for them to uh, get another goal on the power play, making the game 8-1. Brown University graduate, Franzosa, sent along the board, not to the blue line. Lanot holds it in for the Generals. Charging after it, DeLabio will not get to it, but the Gold Diggers cannot clear it out of the zone either. Waddell takes it. He'll crank it against the board. A bouncer, and somehow they hold it in. Pyle with a shot. This one's sent out of the ring. Good save by Francois there. He partially screened, and he took it off the arm again. And uh, he's feeling that arm a bit. He's going to have a few bruises today. Pyle's doing a good job keeping the puck in on the power play. He's getting some good scoring opportunities off of it. And uh, he is leading the team in scoring for Saginaw. And I'm, I'm disappointed they put on defense because he's playing against him when he's a forward and he's quite a dynamic scorer. Face off drop. Lenat off to Pyle. Pyle able to hold it in there, not for long, as teeing it up. And it's sent long by Davey. Saginaw today, two of five coming into their sixth power play. They were just 20% at the start of the contest. That'll go up a bit. Delabio offside by a couple steps. Straddling the line there. Your box office Do Too much dancing. Lido is doing a good job and killing his penalty so far, although I really don't think Saginaw is putting on quite as much pressure as they were early in the game, being up 7-1 with only 840 left in the game, the 107 left in the power play. Aldred on the faceoff, got it to the blue line. A minute left to go in the Saginaw power play. And we have eight and a half to play. 
in the third period. Set up along, and it'll bounce into the Toledo bench. We have two more lucky numbers to call off, both on page 37. We'll bring it back. Of your goalpost program. Page 37. First for Bassett. Dropping the play to get it going again will be Larry Lewis. Calling the lines here, one of the two linemen. Ryan Campbell, the other. Really want to pass along a note of thanks to Matt Zaleski for his help. Also, Gary Wise in getting things set up this afternoon. Sent in, it'll bounce around behind. Duke picks it up, sends it hard on the board, and caromed out on a good play by Dave Falkenberg. Lenat gets tripped up by Falkenberg. No call on that one, and it's back onto the back of Lenat. Very accommodating people here at the sports arena, and ourselves as well as the crew certainly appreciate that. Coaches Greeter and Mahavlich, Gary Francis. About anything uh, we've needed, we've got, and in fact have been asked on numerous other occasions. Do we need anything else? And we appreciate that. Albright will be on the face-off here. 8.06 left to go. 33 seconds remaining on the Saginaw power play. 7-1 our score. The Generals on top of the Diggers. Albright cranks a shot. It goes wide on the shorthand of the temp. Toledo retreats now as Jacob feeds it off onto the side. Rolled. Falkenberg loses the stick, shot by Pyle, goes up on the net behind and bounces loose. Ethier will put it high off the glass and carom it down into the general zone. Nine seconds left as Pyle takes it on this Saginaw power play. And then Meyer will be available there. Back onto the ice now, both teams at full strength. Davey takes it, sets it up into the crowd. Got to keep your eyes on the puck when you're sitting out there. Especially in an arena like this where all the fans are down on top of the ice like that. It's an easy way to get clipped with a puck. February 9th is UAW Ford Motor Family Day with the Gold Diggers. Be sure to check the plants for information on that area. Face off coming with Noonan and Benoit. Slapped against the boards, try to set it in front, broken up. Up with it, Davey. Davey ahead of steam, trying to fill the lanes. They pop it up into the air. Lawn will pick it up at the circle. Lawn sets it in front. Benoit puts toward the net. Again, Benoit picks it up on the near side. He makes the turn, still controls it. Held in by Waddell, bounces it toward the net. Controlled by Pyle. Pyle, stolen away, no, can't control it. And Duke comes up with it. He cranks the shot, saved the rebound, saved again by Franzosa. The red light went on, but it was not a goal. Shot from the point, knocked down, breaking up. Here's Lawn, Lawn breaking in. Pyle has an angle on him, shot and love save by Knickel. Good chance for Lawn, but Pyle and Knickel team up to turn him back. A couple of two-on-one opportunities, both ends of the ice for Duke coming down, ringing one off the goal post. Uh, the goal just looking at the red light, he uh, anticipated it wrong at that point. And then Long coming down 2-1-1, one, one, and Nickel making a real good save off of him there. It's uh, now fatigue starting to set in a lot more. Here we see the, the tube coming up here off the post. It did not go in. Noonan with another opportunity to get the hat trick tonight. Puck comes back up around the board. Bruce Howe trying to keep it in. It's unable to do so. And then Lon coming back the other way, two on one. And as you said, Jeff Pyle has been out there all game and all day. Nickel with the easy glove save. Mahavlich on the faceoff back in the Saginaw zone. Toledo again applying good pressure here in the third period. Del Labio tips it into the Toledo zone. Mayer back on it. Mayer gives it off, waiting, firing long. And it's regained again by the Generals. Trying to work, Horacek, Horacek, stops, spins, fires it in. Sliding through, Driscoll puts the touch on it, back over to Mayer, trying to get it to Driscoll again. Holmes intercepts, Delabio will put the play on. Comes back to Driscoll along the board, taken by Mayer. Mayer gets crunched on the play when he releases it. Bernie trying to freeze it in the corner. Bernie shoved off the play, still trying to work for it. And we've got some pushing and shoving here with Mayer. 
and the whistle sounds. And we're at it again. Mayer along with Holmes. Holmes had had his stick up near the face of Mayer for some time. I'd like to find out why Holmes has a shield on, though. Maybe he has some sort of injury. And that's about the only reason I can see Holmes throwing a stick up in Mayer's face like that. Looks like those two have been eyeing each other for some time now in this game. And Mayer, he's a big boy. He's just trying to get the crowd into it again. He just rubs up Holmes pretty good. And meanwhile, Mayer held up at the blue line as he comes around and wants to say hello again. And there's Mayer. He just locks the stick down with a little help from Ethier, just blocking the way. And now the fists start pumping. And I think Holmes is going to go to the dressing room here. Well, he stayed down for a while afterwards. And he took a couple shots into the face area before the linesman could break it up. Pete Mahovlich chatting. And Horacek and the official on what the penalties are going to be. They're both going off. I think they just take a pick, either reject it or you got 5.56 left. And if it's five minutes for fighting, either way, they'd be just about done for the night. We'll find out if they have been throwing a couple of roughing penalties on top of that. Sit them down for the rest for the showers. I said that one was brewing for some time. Well, as many yeah. times during the year these teams play each other, uh, hockey players have good memories. They follow the things back in their mind, and with a game like this, 7-1, a little frustrated, I'm sure. Again, they also make it out. Play in college against each other, play in juniors against each other. Hockey players and elephants have long memories, don't they? They sure do. Brought into the corner, Mahavlich trying to tie it up there. It's set in front, can't get a play on it. Driscoll wanted to pop it. Bernie controlling it, loses it. Driscoll trying to get it back. Ethier has it slide by. It'll go the length of the rink. Waddell will get it before the icing call made. Waddell being watched by Pyle. Jacob has it, sends it behind. Franz Sosa lifts it up into the stands with 5.22 left. It was five-minute major for fighting and uh, a minor for roughing on Mayer and a high stick. Now they both got a high stick and a fighting, okay? Regardless, it's seven minutes of penalty with less than six left. Sit him to the shower. Let him cool off. And there's the leader of the Toledo Gold Digger, Dave Falkenberg. You had a good conversation with him between the first and second periods. Enjoy chatting with him. He's got a good sense of humor. Face off coming. We remain five on five with the coincidentals. It's dropped. Franzosa sends it around to the side. Aldred watching as it pops out of the circle. Davey had it and picks it back up. He's got Del Cole on the left wing. They start bringing it across, put it toward the net, and again, Knickel with 5.04 left and a six-goal lead isn't going to take any chances there. Not with three goal figures bearing down on him. He didn't want to cough the puck up. And you're right, he's having such a good steady game right now. You don't need to break down mentally and give, give goal diggers a goal. Aldridge will be on the faceoff against Gallant. Face off, spinning around, Pyle in control, still trying to control it dangerously around his goal area though, loses it but gets some help. Now Aldridge sets it in front, stops the score, bumping it by with Del Cole. And you gotta go back to Pyle's inability to control the play dangerously around his own net. Exactly it, he's just trying to do a little too much out there. A little breakdown mentally. All game, they've been just dumping the puck out of their zone when they are in trouble. Aldrich gets the first shot away and blocked by Pyle himself. And there's Del Cole with the easy shot, low to the corner, beating Nickel. And you really can't fall Rick Nickel on that one. Just uh, screened a little bit by Falkenberg, who's doing a good forechecking job on Pyle himself, making the score now 7-2. 441 left in the game and Digger's on a comeback. Del Cole. Del 
Paul picking up his fifth goal of the year. Davy getting one of the assists on the play. And Aldridge getting the other assist. Well, I know it's not much consolation at this point, but uh, Nichols' uh, goals against average will go up slightly for the month of January. And he's played so well tonight, too, making some robbing the goal diggers early in the period when they were mounting a comeback. Comes over to Waddell. Yeah, he really held him at bay there for a long time. Waddell picks it up. The diggers had been threatening to score. Comes out. Blossom tried to bounce it ahead and move in on the fly. Back out at center ice. And it's three on two the other way. Noonan, and here's that line. Dube intercepted. They'll go three on two the other way. Waddell trying to cut through the crowd. Picks it up. Still with it. Has it in front. Shot will not be taken as it went through without anyone able to control it. Dube back on the side again. Amazola floats wide behind the net. Shot set in front again, picked up by the Diggers. Blossom from Waddell. Blossom tried to set it off onto the side, and Lawn was trying to get a line change and had already headed back to the bench. Here's Delavio. Delavio moves it ahead. Gallant, gloved down, back by Delavio on the left wing. A shot gets by, but wide. Three and a half minutes to play. Kicked around. Waddell trying to backhand it to Gallant. Moving up, Mahavlich. Mahavlich carries it in. Mahavlich leaves it for Driscoll. Driscoll in front, deflected just wide, and it bounces back around to the side. Controlled to two. Mahavlich backpedaling, picks it up, gets around one. Tripped up on the play. We're going to get an offside call and a tripping call. Gallant will go off two as we have 2.57 remaining. Pete Mahavlich and Gallant getting together to prove that the bigger they come, the harder they fall as Pete Mahavlich gets taken down here by Gallant. And really, Pete's doing a lot of work today. I'm impressed with uh, 39 years old. And as he said in the interview, uh, the lifespan really of a hockey player nowadays, unless you're Wayne Gretzky or one of the superstars, there's really only four or five leagues. For the last 14 years, quite an accomplishment on his part. And way long into the goal digger zone. No icing because they've got the man advantage. I have them 0 for 2 coming into this power play. Third opportunity, moving in. Davey sends it high along the board. Knickel settles it for his defenseman, lift it up, can't clear it, however. It's left behind, kicked out into the corner on a stick move, controlled by Aldred. Aldred looking for Driscoll, sent along the board. Uh, can't hold it in as Toot has it slide by. And again, Davey behind the net, picks it up. Starts it up ice, moves it along. Aldred carries it in. Tries to go through a crowd, pranks a shot, it goes just wide. Behind, set back up in front. This Frisco trying to get a stick on it, can't do it. And it'll bounce out to Horacek. Horacek gets hit by Davey, trying to freeze it up there. Still trying to work on it, falls down, finally kicked loose. Aldred again, carries it in. Aldred found an opening. Horacek takes it away, moves it up to pile, two on two. Dube carries it in, working against Toop. Backhander set across into the net, get a collision. And Toledo turns it up ice. On the move, Lawn. Lawn has Blossom with him, goes instead on the side. Ethier behind the net. Ethier still with it, gloves it back down. Ethier working it along the board, near side, at the circle. Can't hold it in, it's ice. 21 seconds left on the Toledo power play. Waddell picks it up. When the power play expires, we'll have less than a minute to go. Blossom carries it in. Blossom still with it. Tried to set it, putting the touch on it. Backhander saved by Knickel and sent behind. They'll ice it again. One minute to go in the game. Ethier picks it up. Penalty expires. Both teams back at full strength. Start it up. Del Cole to Benoit. Guy sets it up in front for a shot that's gloved down and put down immediately. Noonan starts up ice. Falkenberg with a hit on Noonan, but it's dropped long to Jacobs. 
Making the turn, Del Cole. Intercepted in front, shot taken, save, rebound by Gallant, goes behind. 25 seconds left, whistle sounds. We're gonna get a slashing call. To finish out the contest, just 24 seconds left and Del Cole will go into the penalty box for the slash. Really been a fairly cleanly played game. Sure has, both teams uh, probably still tired. Playing three games and uh, three nights Except and riding around on a bus. On the other hand, you'd think that would be the time to pick up some holding penalties, some tripping penalties. The defenseman with a man going around, unable to make the move and just hitting with the stick or tripping up. I, I admire the tempo of play we've had, considering it's the third game in three days here. I've been impressed with the Saginaw team, the way they skate and move the puck around the ice. The, uh, the one line especially of Noonan, uh, Camazola, and Tube have impressed me considerably. As has that Mike, Mike Lowen and uh, uh, the Lowen line with Benoit and uh, Blossom have played exceptionally well also for Toledo. Mahavlich along the board puts the press on Camazola. It's lifted up into the air, can't clear it. 15 seconds left to go here. Camazola again, it'll be taken by Mahavlich. He'll just clear it out of the zone. Howells back in his own end, takes it. Camazola puts the touch on it for a two-line pass, and the face-off with five seconds left will be back in the Saginaw zone. Gold Diggers, no rest for the weary here. They'll have some time off. Before again returning to action. Again, January 22nd, they've got activities going on here at the Ice Arena. Next home game will be against the Kalamazoo Wings on the 22nd. And then they go on the road for a couple games. Peoria, 24th and 25th. Back here on the 29th. They check that at Fort Wayne on the 29th. But 22nd, the Wings will be in town. And it's gonna be kids night. If you want a little bit of fun, bring the youngsters out and enjoy some Goldigger hockey. Mahavlich puts the touch on it one second left. They're going to do it again. 7-2 our score here. Pete Mahavlich puts it down, buzzer sounds, and that'll wrap things up. Saginaw Generals go out, and well they should, to congratulate their goaltender, Rick Knickel, and the Diggers. Head to the locker room, absorbing a 7-2 loss here this afternoon at the sports arena. And they'll prepare for their game the 22nd against the Kalamazoo Wings. We're going to pause here for a moment. When we come back, we'll wrap things up this afternoon. Again, our final score, the Saginaw Generals 7 and your Toledo Gold Diggers 2.